It's loading. It's loading. Hey! Hello. There we go. All right. Good to see you, Snowdrift. Snowdrift, how are you doing today? I'm uh I'm doing okay. Um I took a nap a little bit earlier and it's like sometimes you take a nap and it's like, man, I feel great. I feel refreshed. And then sometimes you take a nap and you wake up and you're just like, I just want to fucking die. Yeah, and, the uh, the, uh, <laughs> the the uh, the the proverbial bad nap, um, as it as it that has was been me. described. Yeah, I know yeah, I know that yeah. feeling very well. <laughs> bad naps are uh, no fun, no fun at all. Um, yeah. So why don't you uh, do you want to just give yourself an introduction to my chat for those who don't already know you? I think probably many of them do, but go go for it. If oh you want. yeah. Sure. So um, I'm Snowdrift, uh, also Snowdrift Moon on like most platforms. Um, I've been making music a long time oh, and I talk sometimes about politics and like philosophy and stuff. Uh, I just released an album this past Friday called Closed Eyes, You're Missing Everything. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, everywhere basically. So you just look up snow.drift or closed eyes you're missing everything you'll find it um band and, camp too, um, right? yeah band camp soundcloud youtube uh yeah everywhere yeah that's awesome and uh yeah that's about it yeah um we can we'll pop some links down in there once we get into it um so so let's start with the the basic questions what was okay. your what was your vision going into this album just just can you lay it out for us? Like, what was, oh, the, sure. what was the what was was there a single driving force, or was there a a, a mosaic of them? Yeah. Um, so, I had like early into this year, I wrote a bunch of songs that were very different um, from this record, and I was really excited about them. Um, but I was like, it's going to take me a while to get it all together. And I had all of these old songs that had been sitting kind of around for a while. And I was like, well, I, I need to put out something before I do this next project. <laughs> um, so I was just like, okay. So I just started picking and choosing from a, a catalog of just unreleased material and, and kind of formulated this thing that, um, uh kind of became a, a story within itself and that I, I am still really proud of um and um yeah that's kind of it i mean uh i can get into the the kind of like the kind of narrative that it's trying to get to i think there's like two kind of there's like an, an, a, a somewhat explicit narrative through like the connections and themes between the tracks. And then there's more of like a somewhat like meta narrative going on with the, uh, uh, the, the, not only the cohesion of the album, but the way that it unfolds and kind of folds back into itself. Um, so I, I, we could get into all that, but I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, I, I found the album a, genuinely wonderful listen um i like binge listened it and just so you know um i am very weird about how i listen to music um i have to be in like just the right um mood um to like be able to sit in and absorb something it's very very rare for me to sit down and listen to a whole track but i listen to yours so um, uh, well, thank you. that's that's thank about so the much. highest praise that a, a music uh, a, I'm, I'm not like, I don't want to say I'm a music like uh, like pleb, but I, I, I'm not like uh, I have pretty picky taste, but I don't have like the, the genre knowledge that a lot of people out there have. And, and but I I really loved it. Um, so, yeah, uh, before we launch into talking about the the contents of the album itself, how does it feel to get to get an al another album done? Does it feel good? It's it's a mixed bag. Sorry, my mic is like fucking with oh, me right now. Um, but it's it's largely good. It's just like um, um, uh, it's very hard whenever you put music out because it's this thing that's yours for a really long time. Um, and it's always like a process that you're kind of reworking something. And so once you like officially put it out there 
like it's not really yours anymore yeah. and it gets really hard to like listen to it because then you start then you can really notice like all of the things that aren't right um and um so that's like it's always weird um even if there's like almost no one listening to like my music i still have this like this weight or this pressure that i feel whenever i'm putting out a project um but like i mean largely it feels good i mean i i finished the album like months ago yeah. and was just kind of sitting on it um and while i was waiting to release it i was listening to it over and over and yes there were like little things that i could pick up on and be like ah, i could have done this better or, or, or whatever but largely i was still enjoying it which is frankly really fucking unusual so hey, <laughs> for me to awesome. still like yeah for me to still like be able to listen to it and be like i this is i like this like it's it's good uh, um that that's unusual um but yeah it, it's it's largely pretty nice it's a good thing yeah um i i have to say i i feel like i have some some similar feelings about launching um you know uh, an art project i years ago published self-published a um novella and again like i didn't have like a at basically no audience you know what i mean i just just like just dropped it you know what i mean but it had been one i'd been yeah. sitting on for almost four years and it was a process of like i had to really work myself up to that to that position of being able to actually release it and say okay yeah like just like you said like i won't be able to to really touch this and change it in the same way once i let it go but there was a certain freedom in doing that. And uh, I'm, I mm. look back at that and I'm glad that I was able to do that. And I think it is kind of a natural process of art, right? Like the, the part where you start sharing it and then people take it in and, and think about it and transform it in their own minds is like, I mean, that's kind of a lot of the reason why we do art, right? You know, because we can share mm. it so much with other people. And um, yeah, um, mm. oh, it's, well, I'm, I'm glad to, I'm very happy that you did decide to share it with the rest of us because... Um, <laughs> God, it is. Uh, it, I really enjoy it. So, um, yeah. Do you wanna? Do you wanna do like a let's let's listen to a track and then and then uh, and then we'll continue talking about it. Are you are you good with that? Sure. Yeah, right, yeah, so, yeah. However okay. you wanna do it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let me just get the uh, let me just get this opened up here on my uh, other window. One second. Where's my? There we go. And I'm gonna pull up the track list so I remember what song is which. Yeah, I'll play it on my. Uh, my band camp here so we'll start with we'll just start with number one we'll start with uh leaving wait wait the first one oh it's on here it has a different song uh first one is leaving with sunrise so let's play that mm -hmm. um and i know my my favorite track but we'll we'll listen to this one first. okay oh. so uh let's let's get this going and make sure the audio levels are good audio levels good chat I saw you in my dreams once again Your yellow curls lit up by the sun Your gaze made its way to me And I felt I could be undone Oh, could I be in it all again And feel your warmth once more in my when I last said goodbye, I didn't take the time to savor it all. Oh, I never knew love could feel like putting my heart on ice, just waiting for the sun to come. Oh, I never knew love could feel like wishing to reset time and waiting for the moon to fall.
amazing. And as you can see, we got a eight combo of uh, the Peepo Jammer Ooh. in chat. So people Lovely. are really feeling that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the end, oh my God, the ending is like my favorite part of that track. That, oh, yeah. it's beautiful. You did a fantastic job. So Thank you. do you have some commentary you want to give us? What's the what's your feeling sure. about the track listening back to it now? Yeah, so I could like I could probably talk at length about any song I've ever done ever. So if I just go too long, just rope me back in. But um <laughs> the basic uh idea with that track was um I was playing around with those chords for like a couple days um because they're sort of a similar chord progression to a song by uh cotton jones it's a song called i am the changer it's a fucking really good song although very different um uh it's just this kind of walking down uh, uh progression but within my track there's like more of some jazzy chords happening there and uh so one day i i got off i came home from work and i was playing with those chords and i was like oh this is this is cool this is a nice little pattern and so i laid it down and um and i'm trying to think i i started writing the lyrics and i was like i i don't see anything else happening like i don't i couldn't hear like a drum pattern or anything else going on and so um i just wrote the lyrics and i spent forever on the vocals because i was like if it's just gonna be the vocals and the guitar like i have to make sure these vocals aren't like Like i can't just cheat and, and yeah you know yeah, i gotta yeah. make sure they sound polished and well done so i think i did okay there and then once i added the ending with the like slide guitar i was like oh fuck this is good shit yeah it's <laughs> i was amazing. really happy with that ending just that so that is also like kind of a callback to a track by bon Iver, uh called babies where it's this very like soothing uh beachy track with um with acoustic guitar and then at the end you have like an actual slide guitar come in and it's just so beautiful so i was kind of pulling from that a bit there and um um as far as like putting it as the opener um my thinking with the album was that song and the next song were already out Mm -hmm. so i wanted to get them kind of out of the way early but it also weirdly introduces like thematically a lot of what's going to be going on um both musically and lyrically throughout the album um which is like in this track it's kind of uh more pressing on the like just the the emotional state of like a yearning for something specific what whatever it may be um i can get into exactly what it was with me personally but i try to let it be a bit ambiguous so people yeah. can kind of uh, um, uh, add their own meaning to it. Well, um, I mean, I feel like you succeeded very much on that. Uh, the track to me is like, like uh, I, I, there's so many parts of this. Like, I, I love that you call your music like, like dream pop and like, uh, and, and whatnot, because I mean, to me, that's like, you have a unique ability to capture the sort of um, that, that, that weird, like h- hyper, um surreal like like a uh, process that you go through when you're like half asleep or tossing and turning at night or you're just about to fall asleep and yeah. you start in your brain like you get that expanding feeling you know what i mean of just like what the your brain starts to think about shit differently and it's like and for this it's like this track just is like it's so soothing but it like kind of pulls you along and it's like i just i love that about it so i think it was a very good a good choice for that for that first um for a first track for sure um but yeah you don't have to like reveal yeah. any secrets or anything if you're not comfortable with it but if you ever have a if on any of these tracks you have like a story you want to tell about it please do we would love to hear that i mean that's why we have you here so yeah do yeah. you want to go to the next uh, the, track the, the, the... oh yeah just real quick the lyric that i um i mean there's a lot of lyrics in that track that i'm really uh proud of but there's like a a certain vulnerability to it especially like the the way it ends um kind of is left hanging um which is um just let me know if you're proud just let me know if you if you need me around like that's that's a painful thing to like admit and to like ask of someone and so when i was writing it it was very like cathartic where i was like just trying to get out some like painful shit 
Yeah. Um, and then, and then it leads into, uh, yeah, the next track, which is a bit different. Yeah. This is my, <laughs> um, this is my, uh, uh, un- Domino's Falling Unburied Bones is my, my personal favorite on this. Um, okay. I've listened to this track and I, and I know it's an older one, but. It, oh, yeah. I've listened to it so many times, like no joke. It's on, uh, I have like a really kind of a weird way I do. I organize my music, but every year I have like a year playlist and I've done this since like 2014, probably where I have a, a year playlist and there's like, I'll have like a like, uh, channel. And then if I listen to a song, I'll put in the likes. If I like it the first time I listen, if I listen to it again, or multiple times, then it'll go into the year playlist. And almost always I can go back and listen through that year playlist and I can remember all of the things that I was going through that year and why that song hit me at the moment. And it's been something I've done for years, a little bit of a musical ritual, I guess. Um, And this is one of the ones that um, made it to, I I, actually, I can tell you right now, which, which, which one of my ones, I think, when did it originally launch? Let me see. I think it was last, was it last year or was it early this year? Fuck a time right it was early this year yeah it was oh man i don't actually that's a good question here it is i thought it was earlier this year yep i added it on uh march 29th was when it made it into my uh into my playlist and it's right there between uh it's right there after uh one of the songs from the hollow knight soundtrack which i was playing hollow knight at the time yes then yours and then right after that uh, bring me the horizon which i've been listening to a a lot of <laughs> years right on there so yeah it, it, that's one of the this this track is is I, i'm i'm in love with this track <laughs> let's just put it that way um oh, thank you and i awesome. guess uh, i guess we can we can play it now if you're if you're cool with that yeah yeah let's go for it all right let's play it let me just adjust the audio levels here one second
Amazing. Incredible. Again, thank you. I love that track so much. And uh, we had we had uh, a comment and actually we had two comments and a question from the Twitch chat. Um, one was, is okay. this all done by one person? Um, so I figured I would ask you that. That was the question. Did you do all of this? All of this yeah. Time? No, I actually secretly hire a team of uh, other very talented people, and I take credit for all of it. Um, they're all in a basement somewhere, just just writing this shit there. for me. <laughs> so yes, the answer. Yeah, no, is no, no. One it's, person. A, yeah, a, a it's, one it's, it's all team. me, baby. Yeah, and then the mm -hmm. comments were. Yeah. Um, we had one comment that said, "Wow, beautiful vocals," and then we also had, "Hey, keep up the good work, champ. This is sounding groovy." Um, and then Peacecraft has said, hey, has big money contacted you yet? Are you blowing up, yeah. as it were? George Soros has contacted me for his uh, leftist Antifa record label. Oh, so I should, be, uh, I should be coming out with that news soon. I, sh I probably shouldn't even say that. But. Yeah, I mean, Soros might get mad at you. He might pull you off. Yeah. <sighs> Damn. I, I blew my chance just now. You blew it. It's all right. <laughs> no. So, um, he'll come again. Thank you. That's really sweet. Um, I, yeah. So I'm interested. Like, wh what about that track? Is like makes it your favorite? Do you think? Oh God, that is such a uh, such a tough question. But it's like, I mean, I think it's like, uh, it, it touches on like. Okay, I can I can get like a little uh, a little personal on this one. But like for this particular track, like, um, it it like it hit this this mood of like last year. Last year I lived in like a really wild spot. And there was these, there were these long stretches of time in the winter where we had no power and we had, and we were just like staying inside cause we were totally snowed in. And the, this tune just kind of hit on this like specific mood of like waking up in the middle of the night and there's just silence everywhere. And it's like winter in the middle of winter. And I'm just there with my, my feelings and a lot of them are not like super pleasant feelings there there's a lot of sadness and yet there's this sort of sense of 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 like moving forward in a stream in like a stream of time and yet it's like uh you're just kind of sitting alone with the world moving around you and it's it's i don't know this that doesn't sound like super um like super deep i'm i'm probably stumbling on my words a little bit but it's like no yeah no this absolutely. this track just it, it's so bittersweet and it's it has this like mel melancholy um this melancholy mood to it but that isn't it isn't one that's like uh like like f like sad with finality or anything like that it's more it's got this to me at least it hits me like this uh this sort of recognition of 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 time moving of of being kind of lost in a in a stream of just so much stuff going on around you and even when you're like like again like despite being at this like like at this point in my life where you know um th this song makes me always think back to of just like 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 being up in the middle of the night it's like oh like there is a like as quiet and 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 s like solitary as i am right now there's a whole world that i'm attached to that's moving around me that's that's got all these things and i don't know at you know especially last year like i was dealing with just all of this shit on my mind it's like oh am i is anyone even gonna is anyone gonna remember me am i am i touching anyone am i you know what what am i in the scope of the universe like and and who am i and and who does it even matter should i even be thinking about that and who am i to the people in my life like 
what happens if they're not well? What happens if they're gone? Will anyone will anyone remember me? Will I remember them? Like these sort of things like that. So it's just like there's all of these emotions that are packed up into this song and it just hit that chord. And that's what that's what made me love this track and just keep revisiting it over and over and over again of just like, wow, uh, whenever I find myself in that sort of like contemplative mood, um, this track always comes and just speaks to that part of me that says like, you know, like, yeah. Um, we all struggle with that to a degree, I think. Um, maybe it's unique to being yeah. human, like this idea of like us worrying about what our like impact is on the world around us. It's like a uniquely social thing, but at the same time, it seems to come to you mm -hmm. at moments, it seems to, to be perceptible most clearly at moments of like, so of like solitude. And, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that was kind of a, a an emotional jumble but that's kind of what uh what it what it hits me with if that makes sense yeah no i follow you for sure yeah that's awesome i mean it, it's it's not awesome but it, it's cool that it like does strike an emotional chord with you um and and not a a dissimilar one um i mean i think that track has there's so many layers um just like musically and and lyrically that I could talk about it for a really long time. I will say that one of my favorite things about that track that people may not be as perceptive of is mm -hmm. there's there's a guitar lead in the chorus that's like in the middle of the mix, but it's real distant and it's like pitch shifted and it's this very uh it's like this like a uh, like trickling down kind of noise that's real that. yeah it, it's like that but like if you're if you're not listening you don't like if it wasn't there you would know yeah, but you yeah. don't know that it's there otherwise so it's this very cool like just layer that's there that i'm really proud of um but that's so that's on the course and then like i um all of the vocals on that are double tracked um if not like triple tracked and then there's like harmonies and and some of the harmonies are double tracked um so it's this very like my voice is just very like wide in the mix mm -hmm. and um and um it was hard to get that that to not uh um get to level that with the guitars was kind of tricky um but yeah Strike like uh, back, i remember so. yeah um because i like my vocals like i want you to them to be there and to you to kind of get what's going on but also i i like the idea of like the voice being another instrument kind of mm -hmm. like it's, oh, it is, quite it's literally. helping yeah, yeah it, it's helping like pronounce the track and like give it expression like on top of things not like drown everything else out but um but i do remember like specifically as i was starting on it i had the verses those that chord progression and a lot of times i get home from work and i start working on a song and then i usually take a shower and then in the shower i start thinking about lyrics because i'm just playing the song in my head yeah and i started i when i came up with the first lyrics um that were like um uh in a sea of nothingness i collapse into my own existence i was like oh okay we, we got something like that's that's interesting uh i just like i'd really been reading a lot of sartre at the time and so that was kind of the the um the 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 uh inspiration with that and that there's a line in there that um i have been for others of as i've been to myself and it's kind of this recognition of like i'm very like insular with my anxiety and and my depression and self-loathing yeah. and you kind of convince yourself that it doesn't affect other people um but it does you know and like yeah. you start to realize that your lack of self-love and self-care really does go outwards like just because you're not lashing out at people or attacking them doesn't mean like your perception of yourself is not harmful to others and that's kind of what that was about and and it's this whole like it's a lot <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of this stuff going on with that track but um I'm glad people like it. Yeah, I mean, and I guess like that's that's the the like, you know, I, I mean, I maybe that's what what has you know part of what spoke to me so strongly is like, um, as well as just like, the idea of like, um, the the idea that like we can actually bottle off our emotions truly is is kind of a, 
it, it's kind of a misconception. You can't mm -hmm. really like you can't really hide that. You can't really hide those things in a meaningful way when you when you when you even the act of bottling them up um, changes how you enact with how you interact with the world. And um, while yeah, I think people tend to think of like um, and maybe this is just you know maybe this is a product of our society of the way that we atomize and, and the way that we're pressured to atomize in certain ways. You know we tend to think of like unhealthy emotions as like as again as those explicit explosions where people are like ah really angry or or really really sad or whatever but um there is a unique type of change that can happen over time when you've been like when you've been feeling despair or sadness for such an extended period of time um that it you don't even necessarily notice how it's changed the way that you interact with other people um whether it's just you know, uh, accepting like, um, you know, accepting things at their, at their face value without any like input. I know that's something that I personally have struggled with, with specific regard to depression of like, Hey, um, like a lot of the, the sort of like self-effacing behavior where it's like, Oh yeah, no, I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't have any interests. So, you know, I'll just do whatever anybody else wants to do. Right. Because, um, I don't have those, but you actually, of course you do. It's just that you've not been paying, yeah. you know, you've not been paying attention to them or giving them the life that they need or even the value. Um, I think it's something that like I've struggled with a lot in my life is this like how to piece together self, like a va like self value when all you have is like, uh, like you said, like the, the, like, um, you know the, the 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 quote that was inspired from satra like it's like it's so hard to disentangle other people's like your perception of other people's perception of you and your own perception of yourself mm -hmm. and um especially like when you get into a, like an even bigger picture like if people if there have been people in your life who have been incredibly vocal with their perception of you or the way that they want you to be um, in a certain way, like that can, that can become, uh, almost like it can almost eclipse your own ability to perceive yourself accurately. And, uh, isn't that like, like maybe I'm talking yeah. out of left field here, but it's like, uh, I, I remember, um, you know, like there's, there's certain people that I've like, I had an, I had an ex, for example, who was super critical of me at times. And I can, and there are times where my mind can still almost literally hear her voice and like, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, like I need to remember that like my, my mind has, 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 uh, like internalized a lot of these things and that it oh, actually yeah. affects my ability to self-reflect and it can lead me to thinking these, like these basic assumptions, these sort of internal biases that are totally not like fair, but you give them credence mm -hmm. because like. I don't know. I think by by our nature, we sometimes maybe not everyone, but I think a lot of people um, we seek external that external validation because it's the clearest and the cleanest, but it's not always the healthiest. And um, it is actually mm -hmm. an amazing and incredible process to actually understand how to come to care about yourself and how to not just like see yourself as um, you know as as a like like a fading soul or whatever, like that's just biding their time, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, uh, <clears throat> before you had mentioned this feeling of like, you are kind of by yourself and the world is happening outside of you, that kind of feeling. And that's actually pretty much the encapsulation of the whole like record. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what the album title is really referring to. Um, there's this line by um, by Brand New, which I'm not quite a fan of these days, but the song Jesus Christ, he says, um, do you believe you're missing out when everything good is happening somewhere else? And that was kind of the inspiration for that idea of like, you know, having your eyes closed to the world and like you're just missing out on, on this or that. And yeah. like you want to go, but you don't want to be there, but you don't want to be alone. And um and largely like the theme of, of just alienation um, and not in like the Marxist uh, 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 frame, but more of like a social um, sociological uh, phenomena, more of that um, aspect of it, yeah. of uh, just feeling socially alienated is, is like very much what the 
what a lot of, a lot of the album kind of comes back to at least thematically yeah um and um and yeah that song i'm just i'm really proud of a lot of like a lot of the lyrics it's like um uh, that's what I'm pretty stoked on. Cause sometimes I come up with good lyrics and then sometimes I, a lot of times I'm just like throwing shit at the wall and I'm just like, sounds, sounds good, bro. Uh, but I don't know. The, the, I think you the got line, a talent uh, for it. the line, um, you can rob the graves and have your way is like, oh, it just invokes this like very like dark somewhat even bitter and just like i don't know it's just, there's a lot of like emotions tied to it where i was just yeah i was dealing with and and again like the uh justin vernon a uh, bon Iver, in this interview he did a long time ago he referred to like writing a song as this like experience of like excavating something dead from the ground to like let it breathe in the air and then like fade completely mm -hmm. you know you like you pull that out of yourself and give it life and examine it and then let it go kind of yeah and so that that's the process i'm usually going through when i'm writing and that's kind of what that song is so that's and partially the the the, the song title of uh dominoes falling is like um like one thing leading to another and then unburied bones is just like stuff that should have been dead a long time ago but is still like haunting you kind of a yeah. thing so there's a there's just a lot going on with that track I'm not gonna lie so rakasan from from twitch chat says tra this the second track um which is dominoes falling un um unburied bones sorry i'm stumbling over my words um uh they say it, it gives them the vibes of watching a highway over a bridge at night while smoking weed and being semi sleep deprived. And I'm like, yeah, me too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I think like, I, I think a lot of, and, and, you know, maybe this is, maybe this does speak to a certain degree of, of Marxian uh, alienation. We don't need to sure. go that, but I think it probably does to some <laughs> degree. Right. Like, uh, it's not like devoid. I, yeah. I feel like we have yeah. like, uh, there's a, it's, it's a, shared experience that a lot of um i don't know not to get too generational but a lot of millennials i think especially have this um this feeling of like um of like oh being like you're like told your whole life that like oh there's a world out there and like you're gonna be a part of it and then you get there wherever there is and it's just like oh yeah there's definitely a world here but am i am i even really a part of this thing like and yeah it, it's it's and and if so how and yeah yeah it's like it is that that feeling of sort of like alienation of like another thing too that this like um this track always makes me think of is um an image that comes in my mind is like um visiting a place that you haven't been to that's like that you spent a, like like for example your hometown or whatever mm -hmm. and going there like 10 years mm -hmm. later and like it's familiar but it's not really the same anymore and it's like what the fuck because mm. like i have this like it's been years since i've been back to my home state and i'm like oh wow like the last time i was there already felt like that and it had only been a few years so now it's been years i don't even know what it would be like if i was to go visit my home state but i get this feeling of like oh like it's like it's like coming back and discovering like 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 being a time traveler and you've just you know you've come back to a place and you're like oh yeah i used mm -hmm. to be here i used to be a part of this but it's not i'm not there anymore and neither are the things that i remember some of them are but they've changed and and evolved and moved and or or have been forgotten or whatever so it's yeah it's like um yeah it's again that's why this album like this this particular track like hits me so hard it's like it's been my favorite track and it's just like god it, it gets me thinking about so much stuff and it is cathartic i i sometimes frame like making of art as like uh like being the the, the fucking nerd that i am i'm always like oh it's like it's like channeling your soul into a little crystal and then like hmm. leaving it somewhere for people to find so they can experience like some version of your memories and, and emotions. And it sounds like that was definitely going on here. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's the best thing you can hope for is that like it strikes something emotionally resonant. It does something for somebody else. Um, Cause it's always going to do something for me. Cause I'm the fucking dork who made it. But like, if it does something to someone else, it's like, all right, boom, like, you know, mission accomplished. Uh, and that's great. Um, last thing. And then, um, I guess we do the next one. Sure. Um, 
I, I, another thing I'm super proud of with that track is there's there are these harmonies at the in the very last chorus that are like all distorted and they're panned from like side to side. And those ah oh man, like they're they're the like just coolest sounding harmonies that I've done. Um, like I isolated the tracks and they just have this like very visceral and like and like ah. Uh, uh, it, it just sounds so cool. So if people listen to it and you kind of pay, listen a little closer at the very end, you'll hear them. And they're just, they're creating this dissonance that just adds to that eerie kind of unsettling uh, feeling of the track. Um, and yeah, so that that's the last little bit there. Yeah, no, it's like, it's a, uh, it's a, again, it's the type of like um, eeriness. That's not like, like, uh, deeply terrifying. It's not like a mm-hmm. like an un like like a horrifying track by any means, obviously. But it's like yeah. it's this type of thing that's like oh, like uh, it's like remembering a memory that you're not quite so comfortable with yet. Um, yeah. And it's like oh, I need to think about that, don't I? And it's coming whether I want it to or not. And there's you know what I mean? It's yeah. like oh shit, like it's yeah. here. now it's here, and then it's like. And and also on a tech on like the more technical side of it, uh, I love it when like panning audio is used or three D sound or anything along those lines. Um, just I don't know why it just like it just hits me so hard. So like that's also like a really awesome part of this track that I love. So yeah, um, nice. yeah. Let's let's yeah. Play now it. we're gonna get to the spooky track. The spooky. The song is spooky. Infinite space. Yeah, yeah. So this is track three, Infinite right. Space, featuring Tyler Morris of Tired Violence. So this one you worked with somebody else on, right? Yeah. All right, let's play it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
god damn the vocals in that track are stellar holy shit snowdrift <laughs> thank you yeah when i was doing the chorus i was like uh, can i can i go this hard you know and i and i was kind of able to so i was like oh man that's that was fun uh yeah we got a couple of comments from that one this one was very popular okay. so we got fucking nice. chills we got holy fuck i feel like crying right now um that oh. vocal i love the background layer with the raspy scream me too holy shit yeah yeah, yeah. that's tyler he did really he did a really good job Incredible. um i his vocals like he has a he i've been i've been friends with him for a long time he's super talented um but like he he tapped into this like it reminds me a lot of like chester bennington that's what somebody screams. said in chat yeah yeah and i mean it's it just really helped fill the track out and give it kind of that that like uh that tenacity and like and, and, and virile rage kind yeah. of to it uh that i was hoping to get so he did great um and yeah like when i when i got to the writing the chorus i was really just like going for like a deft tonesy kind of hook where like the vocals were just super washed out and just really like dreamy and and just echoey and just overall like a, a creepy kind of eerie kind of track so yeah um, it's got a uh <laughs> damn it's like okay this is this is going to be a little a little cringe but uh there's this particular like um shot from you, you, you ever seen neon Gen genesis evangelion or evangelion yeah, yeah i always yeah. say it wrong um there's a scene there's like a shot from i can't remember if it's from the films or from the the show of like uh like shinji like 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 fucking curled up on the ground with his hands on his head and like you know just the, oh, the, yeah. the light just on him and i'm just like god damn does, is that like the perfect image to kind of go uh go hand in hand with this track it's just like it's that this track feels like when like what we were talking about in the last track of like oh god the emotion is that 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 memory is coming the like the ouch memory the memory that's gonna hurt and that you haven't thought about um and it's there and it's like like you're that that feeling of like mentally processing it where like you just want to fucking scream and it's like mm -hmm. and there's like almost nothing else you can do is just to like literally just fucking scream it out of your body because it's this all over you at that point and um mm -hmm. god yeah um holy shit <laughs> yeah lyrically there is this um what it was kind of taking pulling from a bit was there's this band um called manners it was a hardcore band from connecticut that i was uh good friends with like years upon years ago um and they had this track called orbiter and uh, the whole track is uh it's just him shouting uh, I'm on the outside looking in, looking in. Um, everyone inside seems happier than me. And it just whoosh, hits like a fucking brick. And yeah. it's just him repeating that line. And so when I was like writing this this song, that's kind of what the headspace I was in and like kind of referencing. And I had this idea of just like, just being this like being that's like floating in orbit and just looking at the earth and like feeling alien to all of it yeah and that's kind of just this idea of like trying to get in and and experience what like existence is like for everybody else just this very feeling of, of feeling alien for sure yeah, alien um, and like dis so. dissociated and and yeah 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 for sure um yeah it's wild too it's like fuck there's so many and like that's holy shit again like a, a lot of the tracks on this album really hit uh, home for me about like the last like my last year like that I dealt with because mm. it was like that like I was remote from nearly everyone that I knew and it was just like this whole thing of like oh like everyone else is is living and I'm here I'm time is moving around me but I can't be a part of all that I can't be you know I I could reach and touch but there's there's like a translucent barrier you know translucent barrier that that doesn't allow me in and um, it's like looking into the, yeah, like you said, like sort of looking in and everyone else seems happier and whatnot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the weird or like concerning thing for me was with that track in particular, it just is, I, I, to me in my head, it was always like super different from like anything else I had really put out. It's just a lot heavier and like sludgy. And so part of me was like questioning whether I wanted to put it on at all. Um, 
but then i was just like ah I, it fits into like the theme that's happening here and lyrically i really like it so i just kind of kept pushing through with like finishing the track and it is to me like one of the most unique songs or at least like unique sounding songs on the album because there's yeah. nothing that really gets that aggressive and like creepy uh yeah at least not not on this album so it uh it, it reminds me um this and and this was on this on this listen through that i was re that i recalled this this dream i had once um that really fucking stuck with me and it was a dream where uh i was like wrongfully accused of a crime and put in prison and i remember the most the pervading emotion on the dream in the dream was this idea of like i don't know what my loved ones are doing or where they are out mm. in the dream and this dream took place over 10 years and and like in the like in the dream world you know and like yeah, yeah in yeah. the dream like my whole thing was like uh i was like i decided to get like ripped as fuck in the dream like i was just like working out like crazy because they kept fucking around with me and um i was mm -hmm. like oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna escape and at that very end of the dream there's this there's this particular moment where uh i took advantage of something happening in like the prison yard and i literally did some fucking stupid like anime parkour kind of thing and jumped out of the prison. It's totally dumb, you know, dream logic. But I remember dream, yeah, landing yeah. and going, I don't even know my family's phone, like my, my, my girlfriend's phone number anymore. I don't know. Mm. I haven't heard from them. I haven't been allowed to talk to them. What if they're not even alive? And, and so there was this moment of like landing on the pavement um, and going, well, I guess I'm going to try and figure it out, but I literally don't even know this world anymore. And it's like, again, mm. that, that feeling of like familiarity. Yeah. There's vehicles moving on the roads, there's buildings, but I have no idea what's happened in the time that I was locked away in this, in this dream. And so like that track, I was, while we were listening to it right now, I was like teleported back into that dream and I'm like, holy shit. And it's giving me fucking goosebumps now, it's heavy. but it's, yeah, it's a damn, that's a, I, I, do you feel do you feel like i've like that that mood is the right vibe that i'm hitting there because i feel like that like is totally the kind of thing that was going on in this track yeah i mean whatever people pull from it you know that's great um as long as they're not like totally unrelated um <laughs> like something super fucking weird um but yeah um i don't know yeah um it's just feeling alien to yeah. uh to the world and, and to people, you know, like just in general, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else like particular about it. That's, that's interesting. Um, there was one question yeah, from Twitch no. chat. Mm -hmm. Um, they said, uh, forgive me if this is an awful question. I highly doubt it's an awful question. Um, but how do you feel about sunny day real estate and have they ever, uh, if you've listened to them, have they been any inspiration to you? I know the band and I've listened to like some of their stuff, but, um, um, uh, I, I don't know that I've, I've really familiar enough for them with their, uh, material to say it was like super inspirational for anything. Yeah. Um, but they're a good band. Fair answer. Uh -huh. Um, that, like that track in particular was, um, I can tell you again, like Deftones was a big inspiration. Um, and then cigarettes after sex actually was another weird inspiration that you might not expect um oh i know the the cool thing on that track is the it's the like kind of halfway mark between the chorus and the second verse and you have that really weird guitar solo that's like fuzzy I, I, I love it and and just sounds kind of awful but like in a good way <laughs> that i, I was really awful. Stoked that's on. terrible but i i that's, oh, that's so mean it sounds so I mean good. it sounds it sounds awful and like it's not necessarily like audibly pleasant you know yeah, what I yeah. Mean? oh yeah 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 um like i like the way it turned out but yeah yeah um yeah. that thing uh that's i'm really proud of is like getting that weird kind of um that kind of sound um so yeah that that's a cool little bit um some of the lyrics I'm, I'm not too keen on with that track i think they could have been a little bit better but uh otherwise it's, it's a cool track um, yeah yeah um Oh, and then uh, I just wanted to address someone from my chat. I wish I had dreams. Stuff like that always sounded so interesting to me. I, I have the most bonkers dreams. Like, I don't know what it is. I've always been this way. I've always had, like, remarkably um, visceral dreams. Um, and my, my dreams almost always have, like, a very specific, like, internal story 
storyline, even if it gets like distorted by dream logic and you wake up and you lose the plot and it comes back together. But there's always like some, like most of my dreams have some very specific theme to them. And um, yeah, um, I would say by and large, my relationship with my dreams are pretty decent, even though there's a lot of scary and sad ones. Um, I like that they're as colorful as they are. They're inspiring to me. But yeah, I'm, I think I'm kind of unique. I don't know that people have, most people have as, as like, weirdly visceral dreams as i do but but yeah um do as, you wanna what's that? As we go along i will i will have i will have some dream related stories in fact um oh amazing there's yeah but uh yeah yeah i love i mean obviously like i i think about and like write about dreamy and, and dream related things a lot like i don't know i've always been really attracted to that um i watched this movie called waking life back when i was like 17 and it really like change my perspective on a lot of things and that movie is like a long i don't even know how to describe it. it's very weird but it's fucking phenomenal and it's kind of all about like living in a dream and like lucid dreaming and stuff like that yeah. so um but um oh yeah yeah that'll be in chat mm -hmm. uh, marinara says oh my god i loved waking life so, oh yeah some of the it's i've never so seen it personally good. To, it's really good on my list for oh. sure it, it it'll it'll fuck your brain up but like in a good way it's yeah. not it's not depressing necessarily um yeah uh, most most things pertaining to dreams have a little bit of everything that's kind of you know yeah. most at least my experience with dreams is always that they have a very unique mosaic of emotions that um the sort of like hyper organic maybe is the way to put it it's just like because you're just like your brain's like you know doing its own like association thing and you have very little input on that and so it just tends to chain from emotion mm -hmm. to emotion and it, and while i'm not like i don't really uh give any like mystical power to dreams i do think that often dreams can um serve as a way to sort of explore certain feelings and emotions so yeah mm -hmm. um do you want to move on Absolutely. to the next track yeah yeah let's do it do it. This is track four, Words That Settle You. Yeah. 
Wonderful. Oh my goodness. I, that one that one hit different. Yeah. Oof. Right. Yeah. God, it's like the the lyric of just like or the the lines where you're talking about like uh, I, I I never remember them liter like the exact words, but when you say like oh like sure, I, sure. like I'm I'm up and like your your partner's not awake and and uh and it's like I think you think it said like uh, uh, I'm you guard your guard your eyes or I think is what it said there and it's like it's like oh my god like what a fucking mood like I know that feeling of like shit like I, I could literally remember like viscerally listening to this song moments of just like when I used to deal with like insomnia really bad and I would be awake and it's like my partner's fucking asleep and it's just like maybe it's raining outside or or maybe the dawn is just breaking and it's just like you're there with somebody else but they're not present with you and it's just like like this again there's that that feeling of like oh like i am in a separate like almost like a, a separate timeline with the rest of the world people are are off in their in their dreamscapes and i'm here thinking about shit and 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 trying to figure out what i'm going to do and whether i'm the right person for the shit that's going on in my life or the right person for this person who loves me or if, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, holy shit. That one is a, that's a heavy track. <laughs> it's, it's funny because normally I would tell you that that's like my least favorite song. Um, but like listening to it now and like kind of soaking it in a bit more, I, I think for me, it's more of a nostalgia thing, but it, it definitely hit me a little different. Um, yeah. That song's actually super fucking old. Um, I wrote that song um, back in like the early 2010s. Um, and when I was working on new stuff, I, I was revisiting that track. And I was like, let me just take a crack at it, like re-record it and like it'll probably sound better. And uh, it, earned, it ended up sounding a lot better. And I'm pretty, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. Like I like the track a lot, but, um, but yeah, it was like, there's just a lot of nostalgia in there and and it's very different from how it used to sound um yeah. but um i sure what was i gonna say oh yeah i mean so for that track it was like at the time i was just in a very um contentious uh honestly quite toxic relationship and the whole song is this kind of like pulling back and forth of like should I stay with this person or should I go? And like part of you is like trying to tell them to leave, but not knowing how to say it. And then, uh, you know, it's, it was this weird like confluence of, of contradictory emotions. And um, um, funny enough though, on the chorus, there's a, there's a reference to an EP that I put out a couple years ago, which has been like the title of something I've had in my mind for a very long time uh called we'll be home soon and that's an old ep that i put out back in like 2016 um so there's just a little a little callback there um the, the musical easter yeah. egg yeah yeah that's um awesome. and that ep that ep is not bad the last track on that ep is one of my favorite songs i've written so th there's that track that i'm really happy with yeah <laughs> but that but yeah so the words that settle you um it was just tricky um getting the build up quite right and yeah. and like hoping that it doesn't drag or feel like too slow um and then it just drops which is i wanted it to to kind of work like that like it feels like it's building up and then it just lets you down slow and like kind of gently yeah um, I, I noticed that like even in just listening to it now though i've listened to it already i was like it's it's like you're surprised by the ending and it's like kind of yeah. like that 
oh, like, and I imagined, like, oh, like, you're in the middle of a thought, and then, like, your partner wakes up or something, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, especially, yeah. and again, um, without getting into too much details, like, I can 100% uh, like, empathize on the whole, like, the, the the very complicated emotions when you're in a like a, a, a relationship that's turned toxic um like i mean i had yeah. a, a breakup with somebody who i was with for six years of my life and um like that the this t this track does really speak to how it can feel at times when you're thinking about like oh shit like what's happening like this isn't this like you, you just, a part of you knows so sure that this like isn't the way that it, things are supposed to be they wasn't the way they were or anything like that but there's that other part of you that's like wanting to to you know i don't know find a way to convince yourself that it that it's going to be fine but make it work yeah, yeah but it's like but again yeah. there's like and it is it is a sort of a, a unique type of of alienation that that comes in in this track where it's like oh like I, it's the realization that you and like your partner or you and even you could even i mean i imagine this could even apply to a friend that you're very close with um like mm -hmm. but specifically like i think when you're with a partner for a really long time there's like that um that realization that like oh like we spend so much time together or we our lives are really intertwined but we're in different worlds now somehow and uh mm -hmm. and that is a unique type of 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 alienation where it's just like oh like um you you might even get like a a pang of guilt from like feeling like oh i'm hiding these thoughts away now because they're thoughts that aren't oh yeah you know contributing to the relationship and if i say anything it could break everything and i don't know if i'm ready for it to break yep yeah hell yeah yeah like holy one shit. of my one of my favorite lyrics from that track is um um it's the second verse and it's um it's kind of like contradicting itself where it's like um you're packing your bags and you're leaving tonight but your love is on call and it beckons to my voice and it's like, like I, I i hope this doesn't sound like arrogant but i'm just really like proud of that like it, it really like resonates with me where it's like this you want someone to leave but you know at any minute you could call them back and get back into that shit that you don't want to be in yeah. but it's the thing you're familiar with and it's so easy like when you love someone to just to just fall back into the trap of the 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 power that you have over each other of a shared bond and Holy and shit, a shared trauma you know yeah you're not, it's like, you're not lying about that it's heavy i mean yeah. i've done i've done that before <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah i've made that call before um probably mm -hmm. more times than i'm proud to admit you know like Same. where it's like yeah. it's like fuck like uh it's it can be so hard it can be oh my god it can be it's like it can feel literally impossible at times where it's just like oh like how can i i don't know you get again so many parts of your life become intertwined that even when you're at each other's throats at times and it's just totally not working it's just like uh, especially if there's other shit in your life that's going fucked, which is usually the case when you're late. Yeah. Like, it's usually just the, the fact of life. Like, everything gets fucked at the same time, right? Like, um, but it's like, if there's other shit that's fucked, it can be like, wow, like, we don't have, like, like neither of us have, like, a, a place that's, like, like can feel warm and, and familiar and safe. And yet, and it isn't really safe and familiar with one another anymore um but there is devil that there's you the, know yeah is, there's this, that trapping better that is than like, the devil you don't you yeah. know exactly precisely and it's Sorry. like and and there is the awareness of like of like oh they're probably feeling that too and they probably know i'm feeling that mm. and it's just oh man it can be so bad <laughs> it can be so fucking bad yeah <laughs> holy shit for sure um Oh, uh, good night, Rakasan. Have a wonderful night. Uh, hopefully the rest of your night at work is great. Um, thanks for listening. Um, yeah, it looks like you've got a new follower. Rakasan gave you a follow. Has really been enjoying the oh, track. Well, thank so you. Sent, sent you off with some kind words. Shit. Um, Marinara says, musically, I really loved how the notes kept surprising me. Like, I thought I knew a line was going to end, but it always had a bit of a twist or a subversion. Um, hmm. Yon says, 
um, uh, kind of gives it kind of gives me a little bit of the opposite vibe. It never seems to fully wake up, but drops down further. I think that was in reference to me saying where it really hits the pitch, but keeps keeps building. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the the opposite of what I had said. Mm -hmm. But I think that's I think that's kind <laughs> of fitting to the track, right? This this back and forth of those sure. conflicting emotions, those yes. those supposed contradictions that contradictions mean nothing to the heart, you know, <laughs> like fuck you, yeah. you're, you're oh, yeah. like it, when it when especially when it's like when you're that deeply again that deeply entangled the contradictions stop mattering mm -hmm. and you're not always thinking clear about them so i like that that aspect of it yeah oh lord we got in chat yeah yeah i know i know we're dealing with some heavy emotions in this track but that's what you that's what music's for right that's for 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 exploring these things. yeah i hope this has been like depressing as fuck <laughs> no no it's like, cathartic it's, uh, it's good I like hope... you, sure yeah okay. i mean people are loving the music so um with that yeah. do you want to move on to the the bittersweet interlude interlude we yeah can to yeah if so you have anything else you want real, to say on this track real quick yeah oh yeah so going into the, the next one for me this is kind of like it's kind of like the halfway point of the the album for me mm -hmm. um it's like the first couple of tracks are very like guitar kind of like band sounding oriented and then the this kind of midway point kind of it gets more like synthetic and electronic um while still having some of those same elements but to uh, to me it's just where the the album kind of changes uh at least sonically a bit so yeah um and and i'm really excited for people to hear that further in i'll be leaving soon because mm -hmm. yeah that's i think that's where for me at least it becomes like most clear and i'm like whoa like, yeah. yeah it's great uh all right let's play it cool You say it's all for the best So you leave no regret So I try and get into your head As it slides again into your bed I wanna see who you are Cause I know I hold no part of the sea We need a lighter wave emote, says Antipodian Squid. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. We got a it's, uh... strong response on this one. Ooh, well, hopefully you'll have an even stronger response when uh when we come back to that track. Yeah. Um so I I, I see there's there's some secret sauce and I, I I'll try not to give too much of it away here, but obviously uh, there's another track on the album called Bittersweet and this is actually a refrain from that track um just kind of being introduced earlier in the album um and it's it's that refrain um kind of changed up lyrically a bit and obviously musically and i had this idea where i wanted to do it and just make it very like very uh dreamy and just a piano and like layers of vocals um and um yeah it turned out really cool um i, I like it it kind of it kind of sets the mark for the change sonically and gives the album a bit of 
uh, a, a brief detour that kind of lets everything breathe a bit you know mm -hmm. yeah um so so yeah dreamy um, but dissonant bittersweet um says barbinger from twitch chat um and well, people want to come get into the site chat now so <laughs> gonna drop that hell in. yeah do come, it come hang out in the site chat it's much cozier in here and uh i hear that that if you're cozier you'll enjoy music even more so there you go sure. come get cozy in the cozy chat hey there isis lovecom happy to have you um yeah fantastic uh like i i really am excited again like no spoilers no too many spoilers but i'm excited yeah, for people yeah. to hear the the return um you can do a post-mortem like at the end where i'll i'll give i'll give everything away because yeah, like yeah, the spoilers. My, i hope i hope for this album really was if anyone listens to it that's fucking amazing but i hope they listen like twice because i think you have to to like mm -hmm. pick up on what's going on um which I haven't, I haven't given away yet. Okay, so <laughs> we'll get, we'll get to it. Yeah, you, you have to watch till the end. This fucking uh, YouTube clickbait here. Yeah, and don't Thinking forget to what? like and subscribe. Rip yeah. <laughs> can I get a million likes on this? And then just like in the yeah. middle of the album. Yeah. Oh no, we got God, somebody got somebody attempted to ooh spam in the middle, and they got they got muted. Damn, Kino, you got muted for ooh spam. I see. I see. It's funny, like, because there's one track at the end where I did this, like, ad lib. <laughs> but, like, it's not in the track. But I was, like, working on the track with a friend. And he was like, uh, you know the ad lib that, like, uh, rappers do where it's, like, uh, the sound of, like, a gun and it's, like, yeah, the like brrrr. that? Yep, yep. Scrap. Literally added that to a track. And I just added, like, all of this echo and reverb. And for like an hour, I was like, yo, this is this is kind of dumb, but it, it kind of fucking slaps. <laughs> and then I showed it to my friend and she was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> On second thought, maybe no scrap. <laughs> yeah, I heard it like without because sometimes you do something and you're like, this is a great idea. And then you come back to it. And you're just like, what the fuck? fuck was i thinking yeah i i could tell you i've i've had many a moment like that um yeah yeah but uh real quick before we continue on um the uh on the track i just need to hit the restroom real quick so i'm gonna just do that real oh, quick sure. i will be right back you can keep chat entertained oh god okay let me let me pull up chat Cut, I, I cut out of it so that I don't get distracted and so that I don't get cyber bullied. How's everybody doing? Streamer gone. Mods asleep. Post Pepe's in the chat. vibing beautiful you love you love to see it hey i can get um should i put on mood lighting can i do the bread tube aesthetic do you guys want that <laughs> that's your doll oh um logic pro x is uh is what i used to record i used to use uh fl studio back in the day but nowadays i use logic because i've got an apple uh computer emphatically yes okay hold on lmss i'm actually not familiar with that uh with that program that look it's like fl nice i've got a candle lit and everything just so it smells good in here <clears throat> thank you 
Great lighting. Beautiful. I've returned. I'm back. Back. All right. Let's continue. We've got the we've got the bread tube lighting going on, so Hey, oh, I love it. I love the bread tube lighting. Listen, people make fun of bread tube lighting, but that's just because they're jealous of bread tube lighting. Lighting. They wish that, is... that their house had it. Yeah. Okay, I'm closing out chat again because I don't like to get distracted. So No distractions from chat. Chat, stop distracting. Stop, <laughs> stop distracting the interviewee, you fucks. They, no, go. no, no. They were great. They were beautiful and nice to me. But I, oh, okay. I, anytime I'm on someone's stream, I just I can't do it because I will... uh. I would get distracted and or people will cyber bully me. So yeah. I'll, I'll leave that to you. I feel <laughs> you. Stream. I feel you. I mean, I, I only watch my own chat. Uh, I don't care about it. <laughs> Is that bad? Is it bad that I don't give a shit? No, I, I don't think it's your job. Yeah. You know, yeah. like if you're on someone else's stream, it's it's their uh, duty and their like mods to like keep that shit in check. So. I know I yeah. know I make people mauled all the time every time I'm on a panel. So most of the time I just say, fuck it. I'll listen to my chat. Whatever. <laughs> like, exactly. People, people mauled. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've gone back. I have gone and checked chat on VODs and stuff. But that's neither here nor mm -hmm. there. Let's get back to the music because chats. Okay, let's do it. This is the only chat that matters, not those other ones. There we go. All right. So Ooh. I love this track uh, so very much. Uh, a track six, I'll be leaving soon. Here we go. It's been so long that I've been alone. And since I've known the touch of another one, I've been so far gone. With everything, everyone I love I've just been waiting for someone to love me You've just been waiting for some kind of fun and see That will be coming, I'm telling you Got the beginning of the next track there. <laughs> Holy oh, my god, I love that track. Then that is 
just so you know, if it wasn't apparent by uh, by my reaction to it, uh, that is my my second and very close to to, to uh, very close to, uh, to the first one favorite track on this album. I love it so much. Um, I love the 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 uh, soft guitar that comes in towards the end. Incredible. Uh, the twinkling uh, synth, I think it is. I'm like terrible with identifying things mm-hmm. off of the top. That's my my partners. You can do that, but it sounds incredible. And um, I love the the like uh, repeated words. Like, oh my god, that hits like so good every single time. This is like the oh my god, I fucking love that. Well, like the the pitch shifted um, on the chorus kind of thing. Yeah, and the and it's the, like when it's like so you, you 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 yeah, yeah that I love it love it. The oh echo. yeah. Yeah, that, that was the funnest thing. So good. I had that in my mind when I did the track, and I I kept hearing it, where it was like this repeated thing, and it took me a while to get it. Um, like yeah, there's like the ad lib of like um, she said, she said, and it's like it's going between both ears. Yep. And it's all different like takes, so it's it took a lot of work to get that to sound right and to not like drown out the main vocals. But it was such a cool like thing to finally get that down. And then like like you pointed out, the synths those were like the last thing I did on the track actually, where I was like, there needs to be more melodically happening, filling yeah. out some of the space. Oh, I love so it. So it's like it's... let me just add in those those little bits there. So yeah, yeah, and it, it kind of comes out of nowhere, like like because I mean that's such a different sound than what we've heard so far in the album, and I it's yeah. just amazing. It's so good. Um, I love how organic this track feels. Like again, like you like it comes through that they're like that you did different takes, and then there's that the echo, but it's like it's like a a real like a real echo that you get like the whatever other sounds are happening in the area like if you're in a canyon and you echo it's not the same sound that comes back um quite literally and it's incredible but it's close enough that again it it works perfectly it's i really love that um thank you yeah god i love that track. so that also that track was it i called it co-produced by a producer called rare bear um but it was more so like um i got the beat from him like Mm -hmm. a long time ago and I uh, wrote the track and recorded it. And um, <clears throat> and so like some of the production on that is done by him, but it's uh, I, I I did a lot with it. Um, so like if if you go and listen to like his original beat that he did and then listen to the track I did, it's it's like different worlds almost. Yeah, uh, yeah. But he deserves a lot of credit for like setting that foundation that I was able to build off of. Um, so like like the really heavy uh like bass line that's in there the thumping like kick like a lot of that was in is in the track um so um i just like to kind of point that out that that is the one song that i didn't do totally by myself (laughs) but a lot of the stuff was was me over like building off of it so we got a lot of comments on on this track very popular with the chat i like the the vapor wave style deep voice it really works that was really yeah. fun groovy and dreamy That's together a lot more <laughs> yeah a little bit of vaporwave sound yeah yeah i love that too i'm i, I love vaporwave i'm not gonna lie same um, yeah, yeah yeah it's great uh marinara says this one's gonna get a, a ton of play from me i can already tell we got some uh a combo of blob dance which is amazing Hell um, yeah I liked I liked the through 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 to you 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 lyrics yeah that's what I was touching on yeah so good um yeah fantastic um so is there any is there any story you want to tell us about this particular track because I know you've had a lot to say about the other ones and and this has got a lot going on so if you've got anything that's sh- shouting out to you or if you want to share with everybody I'm sure people would love to hear it yeah I don't really <laughs> I don't really know what to make of this song like lyrically. Um yeah, like I said, I, I wrote it um that one's kind of an older one. I think I did that one back in like um twenty eighteen at some point, but it took a long time to get it right. Um but the songs I guess just kind of about like trying to re enter into romantic relationships and like feeling incapable of being honest or vulnerable um like this song literally opens with this like uh, lyric about it's it's been a long time since like i've even been touched by another person basically like since i felt like like any sort of intimacy and that's just kind of where i was at with things and so um it's just it's just kind of um yeah just like 
trying to get through that and like trying to get used to what it's like to to have someone to care about and and hope that they reciprocate that that yeah. feeling it's well, like there's there's the there's the scars from you know relationships past and then there's the fear of the scars you know what i mean like oh well is there stuff that i don't even know about yet like what's gonna happen like the unknown is 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 haunting and like but at the same time there's also like there's a very like personalized form of it it's like oh well what if i can't connect like i did with somebody else or or what if i what if that connection that was never there doesn't exist here either like or or you know there's all these things and that that really you know that sort of feeling comes through quite well where it's just like the there's a a um an anticipation that's not particularly pleasant there but it's still exciting because there's the chance that you're wrong and it's one of those situations where it's like i kind of hope that i'm not as hurt as i thought i was and and sometimes that is what happens indeed yeah yeah, yeah. it doesn't always turn out horribly yeah you yeah. know and it's all it's all learning yeah. so you know but yeah that's, that's that's about it um i there were other songs that i liked a lot more that i wanted to put out instead but everyone was like oh this is this is the catchiest one it's so i was really like all right well, this will be it yeah it's because got... it's again i i I don't want people to think I don't like the songs, but I do have I do have favorites. Oh, and the course. next song is the next song is my is 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 my favorite. Um the next song and then there's there's a few other that are my favorites. But um but yeah, I mean I think that song for me, I've worked on it for so long and like reworked it so many times that I, I still like it, but I kinda I kinda I hear it and I just think about like Wanting to die <laughs> well try to get it try to get it right you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so much work in the, yeah it. it's like it's like oh god yeah like sometimes and you know that's funny like not to not to you know w waste we're not to waste time in between getting to the favorite track but no, um fine. but there's there's some pieces of of art that you make uh where it is almost like ruined for you because of if you have such yep. a hard time making it and it's like fuck i've had uh i've had oh the best i mean i've i wrote like a, a novel once for a commission and that was like that where by the end i was just like and other people loved it but i was just like when like and the commissioner was happy and everything but it was just like oh my god the the, the sheer suffering that i went through trying to make this thing happen it's like i can't i can't help but think about it when i'm hearing the song or when i was when i was reading the story and in this case i imagine it's the for the song where it's just like oh my god like it, you have a completely unique experience which hey that plays into the album a little bit having a, an alienated experience yeah. of the track that you made to what everyone else hears you know but but yeah so yeah. let's uh let's jump right that, in then to uh oh sorry did you have something you want to say real quick yeah that's that's a huge like disconnect for me where like a lot of times the favorite tracks that people have or like even like when i played shows a lot like people would be like that was your best set and i would come off of it being like that was the worst fucking set that i've ever played so like a lot of times people would be like oh this is my this is my favorite song of yours and a lot of times there is this disconnect where i'm just like ah it's not it's not my favorite it's not even the best but you know that it, it's it's people's interpretations of things and like i'm never going to complain like if someone's like oh i, I love like this one track off the album yeah it's like that's great that's the fact that you listened to it at all and enjoyed it is phenomenal so thank you so much yeah <laughs> yeah well, so this next one I, i'll i just want to set it up real quick is uh, the one thing about this track is i really wish i could see people's reaction to like the halfway point because I think personally it's it's really surprising but in like a fucking awesome way. Well, we'll see how um, chat responds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um like oh god. Okay, yeah. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. So this is this is track number 7 BHC. Oh, I'm drinking again. To eat the thoughts that keep me up, the dreams that haunt my evenings all night. I'm thinking that this way that I have opened up, my heart again can leave me cry. The stars that I see. Are you in your bed? 
left inside It's been several months since we spoke You didn't have to stab me in the back Because you went straight for my throat And there was no warning No signs, no calls Just another free fall Do you really think you know me? Enough to break my back Was it worth all the pain you caused? Your music is just uh, this album is so f- so incredibly evocative and it's just like I don't know again it 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 brings me to so many specific memories and it's just like oh god are they heart-wrenching sometimes <laughs> <laughs> like cuz yeah. in this one it's like the beginning there's like this longing and at the end it's just like it's like you feel it like gone like especially lyrically where it's just like oh the longing is like oh it's turned to bitterness and it goes like that and it's just like and yet you know it's it was just it's it's a continuum you know where you were just a few seconds ago and it's just like oh god that's such a such a transformation within the track um oh, i love that track so 
<laughs> we got a lot of comments on this yeah, one. So... Yeah. So go ahead and then. Okay. Let, let, yeah. Oh, sure, sure. So, yeah, go for so it. yeah, so I had written that track. That's probably the the freshest of all of them. I wrote this like just a few months ago. Um, and I had the first part of it, like that whole, oh, the whole like folky, dreamy part where it just kind of fades and, and ends with that um, last part before the switch up kind of halfway through. I had that whole track and I was like, man, this is fucking, I love this. It's, it's dreamy. It's chill. I got to do all of these harmonies. And it's like, I was like, man, this is fucking sweet. But in my head, I was, I was hearing the, the loop the the reverb drenched guitars at the beginning mm -hmm. and i was hearing that in my head at the end and i was like i can do something with that and i i figured out the chord progression in my head and i immediately was like oh i know exactly what i want to do with this and so i i put the i did the chord progression i did those little like those like uh 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 vocals and i was like oh this is gonna be a fucking banger dude like it turns from this like very folky dreamy track yeah. to this like heavy like 808 like fucking insane like like trap drums over this ambient uh dreamy tune with like it, with the same some of the same instrumentation from earlier like those bells that are mm -hmm. earlier in the track come back with the same melody but it's a different progression mm -hmm. which gives it this different emotive uh tendency to it and um for me um the song is actually like two different stories although one might assume they're related yeah, <laughs> um yeah. like the the first part of the track is like you kind of stated it's that longing and that yearning for someone and just like knowing this person doesn't reciprocate like romantic affections essentially yeah and it's like you know okay this sucks but like it's not your fault and that's ultimately what that is like um i think sometimes people when they when they get like political in their discussions of like um romantic situations and and like this like kind of friend zone -y thing mm -hmm. like they treat it as if it's not real um but like you get friend zone sometimes and that doesn't mean it's bad like you still be friends with yeah, someone yeah. who you have feelings for but like that person who has those feelings that uh, that affection for someone it still sucks to be that person. <laughs> um, totally. And so, totally. So I was really just expressing that, but also making sure, making it clear that like, it sucks, but like, it's not your fault. Like you can't feel any way that I want you to feel. Um, and I can't force that on you. And so my concern when I did the second part, I was like, people might, think this is like some incel anthem where i just get totally black billed <laughs> no i mean that's but, not what it read like to me at all um you know <laughs> it's more like i don't know i guess what what i think of was like um oh like like when there's when that like i guess for me that what came across is like when that sort of natural like you know whatever it is non-reciprocity be can become toxic and sure. it can become really hurtful um especially if there's like um if it's like oh god like i mean god i can i i, I of course i've got the specific things i'm thinking of but it's like if, if someone especially if they're like not communicative or if they don't know themselves yeah. and aren't at the point in their life where they um like can express or can express what they want or need or whatever. Um, and that could become so prolonged painful that it can lead to like that, that sort of more second half where it's more of like the, 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 the pain and the, and the bitterness kind of feelings. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if someone like, it's kind of pulling you along and like not being honest with you, mm -hmm. like they're aware of how you feel about them and they're just kind of playing with that and like yeah. not respecting that then like, yeah, you could definitely get to that space. But for me, like a lot of the times when I'm writing songs, they're kind of like just letters that I don't send, Yeah, you know? And so the, the first half is a letter to someone and the second half is a completely different person who just yeah. like, really fucked me over in a massive yeah. way so yeah, fuck fucking fuck them yeah yeah, yeah. so and, and, and you, you tell there's a lot of like bitterness in that second half for sure it's just yeah like, but it's like i mean again that is a uh one of the many uh real emotions that can be the product of of 
of relationships which are incredibly emotionally complex and yeah. also like um you know like it's funny you mentioned like the incel the like incel anthem thing well it's like you know a lot of those emotions come from um r like they're like they're real things they just become um you know distorted by this by these incel spaces you know what i mean like i think it's completely natural to feel yeah. disappointed or even hurt if something that you you know were hoping very strongly for that like your emotions are very wrapped up in just doesn't doesn't work out or can't work out um and you know and then of course with the second half it's like again there are very justified reasons to feel bitter or angry at people sometimes and and it's 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 unfortunate that sure. like i i do agree with you that there's like a lot of there's especially in recent years i think this has become especially true there's been a high like a very high politicization of relationships not working out or relationships being really bad or whatever and it's like wow there are just times where there are just times where someone's gonna be rightfully bitter because somebody else did something shitty <laughs> it's like yeah um yeah so yeah and like again not to get too much into that but it, there is like this like kind of call out culture thing where when people break up and they start airing their dirty laundry but they do it in a way that's like very again like it's it under the surface the underpinnings are very political mm -hmm. or at least like politically inspired and driven where it's like you know normally i wouldn't put this person's business out there but they did so and so and it was like extremely toxic yeah and yeah. it's like no maybe it was maybe it wasn't but like putting all of that shit on like there's a time and a place and there's there's a certain I don't want to make it sound like no one should ever speak up when like they've been treated poorly. Like yeah. if they feel they need to, of course, like, I, but there's also times where people just put other people on blast because they are bitter and, and want to feel like morally superior. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, I, I think part of that too is probably, um, you know, complicated by like social media because um, yes, yeah. you know, when you have a breakup, it's natural to talk to your friends about all the shit that happens, but people on mm -hmm. social media, you might have thousands of followers and like those people probably don't have the, uh, like same insight or familiarity with the situation that, that your friends would, that you would normally talk to. And I do think there is a yes. time and a place. Um, absolutely. Like you said, there is absolutely situations where, um, larger scale, like, call outs are actually required even if it comes at the end of a relationship specifically in cases of like severe manipulation and abuse um like that can be something really important especially like especially it gets especially messy if they're people who are involved in other public projects where like like i mean for example imagine yeah. if like your partner is like the managing director for like a women's shelter and then they're like abusing you like that's sort of the sort of thing where it's like, OK, yeah, that needs to be kind of like aired out. But I do think that there is a thing that can happen where like um, people's relationships can become unintentionally like a matter of like public spectacle in a way that isn't mm. good. And it's like it's like the Internet small town effect, but it's worse because it's not contained yeah. to the small town. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know if you ever lived in like a small town, but like, but like that sort of thing can happen oh, yeah. when people break up. It's like, it can become the talk of the town, but, um, but yeah. And then when it becomes the talk of the town on the internet, depending on how many people are involved, that could become the talk of the, not the town, but like way too many people who are way too parasocially attached. So yeah, I feel you a hundred percent on that. Um, just going to read off some of the comments we Give got. Give me the gratification. Yeah. Here's Everyone the, say here's nice the serotonin, um, the serotonin <laughs> drip. Um, so this is the one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Uh, it starts with, oh, oh, it's okay. So the, this was one from the last one that came in right before we started playing, which is silent said, this album is getting deep into feelings. I didn't want to be sorting through at the moment with a sad face. <laughs> Right. which is true but you know that's, that's right. that is very thematic to the album um then we had oh i love sure. this from yeah. antipodian squid we got an ouch in chat i love the crystalline synth uh same yeah the shimmer is great uh i am again in this picture and i don't like it with a pepe hands <laughs> um or rather people hands um then we have next time snow makes a track uh he should just at me directly <laughs> 
<laughs> and then we have an ah and a oh my god damn that was a great break um mm. yep that's it my heart has been delicately but ruthlessly ripped out and i am glad for it this track is amazing and apparently it's suddenly raining on my face best track um oh. i feel personally attacked by these lyrics uh and then we had a comment uh weekend vibes i don't know much about the weekend actually uh but uh, maybe you do i don't know um yeah little, the, there's some inspiration there yeah 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 little r&b vibes from the beat towards the end Oh, that slow dissolve really hits. Mm -hmm. um, and then that shift at the begin at the end there reminds me of, and I'll never remember which track, but a piece of music that was from Homestuck. Hmm. Um, the, okay. Uh, what's his name? Toby. Toady. Toby. I don't remember his name. Damn, that last part could have held on yeah. longer, but it was really dope. Uh, reminds me of some of the effects that Melanie Martinez uses. Had to skip out to focus on homework, and now I feel like I was coming back to a dream. Wow. Um, and then Sweet. somebody said fresh with a pH as the kids say, and then cash McCrash, our resident oh, yeah. uh, zoomer expert. That is not what they say. <laughs> Damn it. And then I was uh, in agreement. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more of a really intense crush that never turned into anything because it just wasn't the right time or place. And then Windleby says, I have a personal question for you. Snowdrift moon. When you met Satan at the crossroads, okay. what did you have to sacrifice to get those smooth transitions? My, i mean not a whole lot just like one ball actually that was all it took hey there just you one go of my balls. <laughs> just one hey that's that's that's, that's a fair trade not know? my soul no soul a single ball one. <laughs> no um yeah and what's cool what's cool about Generous that track too is that the very end <laughs> at the very end uh it does like that vapor wavy thing where i take the i take the end and i like pitch shift it down and like add a bunch of delay and it gets really sludgy and then it does it again and it like the track skips and i was like damn i just got to do everything on this one song so for me that was a lot of fun um there was actually supposed to be somebody else on that track who's gonna do some vocals but um it didn't happen and i'm kind of glad that it didn't because uh, i'm glad i got to like air that shit out mm. on the second half because yeah. that's when they were supposed to come in but um I mean, but yeah I, yeah that's so. that one is my favorite sometimes fate yeah. throws you a, a curveball and you make something incredible with it yeah yeah so i'm that that's a good one <laughs> we also have uh grime dango says fuck the weekend i'm from toronto i can say that <laughs> what uh oh uh, do, do you know some secret spice i don't know about uh probably Dude, I, I, all right listen i've been listening to the weekend since uh since house of balloons baby okay Damn. i've been on board a long time on a long time i'm usually I'm, he's a bad I'm always dude, late to the bandwagon he's a bad dude yeah apparently i don't know now here's the thing uh, uh Grime I, that Dango, wouldn't be surprising uh, Grime Dango is one of my partners who is incredibly knowledgeable about music and musicians. So I imagine y'all could Sick. have an amazing, amazing track. I don't share the same, um, the, the same, uh, depth of knowledge on, on the lore of many bands that Grime Dango has. Um, <laughs> gotcha. one second. Yeah, I could definitely see Weekend. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just addressing a, a chat. Oh, sure. Gotcha. Yeah, I could definitely see the weekend being kind of a uh, tied up in some some suspect stuff. So, um, but I still big fan of the music. Um, maybe not so much the person necessarily. Yeah, that happens a lot. It's a reality of enjoying much art. Oh, yeah. You have to, you know, uh, it's not always possible necessarily to. I I don't know. I don't really like the term like separating art and artist necessarily, but it's it's possible to in, in to enjoy to gain something from a piece of art, even if the artist has done some very suspect things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Grime Dango says listening to Bauhaus at thirteen did something to me. I do love Starboy as an album. It's really fun. So yeah. yeah. Star Wars is a great album. I, I don't know much. I, I liked um, After Hours. After Hours? Yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, Weekend's most recent uh, album. Just came out a bit ago. It's pretty good. I do know The Weekend was in Uncut Gems, a movie that I fucking yeah. loved. But uh, holy shit, that movie What's was What's wild? I just learned this last night. 
the guy chuck person who uh who wrote chuck person's echo jams volume one which was like basically the a staple initial uh vaporwave record mm -hmm. the that guy did the uh did some of the music for uh uncut gems which is fucking wild that's awesome yeah, um really yeah weird. uh my my partner uh grime dango uh uh her wife is um is one of the progenitors of, of vaporwave so <laughs> Yeah. Wait, wait, who who is it? Uh, I know you don't want to like dox them or no, some no, shit, no. but oh, that's cool. Yeah, um, we can, uh, yeah, we can, we can. Yeah, you gotta DM about me about yeah, this yeah, one. We'll, that's we'll awesome. That. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, Grime, Grime Dango, you could do this. You could do this in chat. Go for it. I'll let wow. you, you, you do this. I won't do any more. Yeah. So, <laughs> so go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Can so. you post their full name and their address, <laughs> please? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to overplay my hand here, but 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 Grime Dango sure, has always sure. been willing to talk about it in chat before. Just I don't know the the degree to which I should say anything, but um Yeah, of course. But you know, you know. Um but yeah, so uh oops, didn't mean to start that so early. Ah The Vaporwave name was Shopping World JP. Familiar? Oh, I am not. I'll, I have to listen now to you got, it because, now you got something like, to listen my, to. yeah, my vaporwave knowledge needs to need some work. So, shopping wave JP, shopping world said? JP, shopping world JP. Gotcha. She awesome. Did a split I will check EP that out. With that, Saint Pepsi. That's fucking awesome! Wow, holy yep. shit, that's yep. really cool. Told okay, you. dropping the creds in chat, Grime Dango. I, I told I you. Yeah, you're fucking flexing on me right now. I love the shit. So here's the thing too: is I've got like a, a a vaporwave, whatever kind of thing I'm working on. That's like a separate project. So I I think that might be my focus for a little bit. There you go. To, uh, to give me some room to breathe. Um, but I'm very like imposter syndrome, you know, about it. It's weird. It's oh, just such a different thing for me that. that I'm like. You know, yeah, yeah. You but try it's also like, it, it's but it's like... important to experiment in that way, right? Like, it's important to step yeah. out and like, and uh, and and dive into something new that inspires you and some some fucking amazing stuff. Yeah, it's I it's it's different and it's been a lot of fun and um I've I put some of it out on the Snowdrift channel before, but I I took it off because I want to do it like just as a separate thing. Yeah, its own little and, brand um, or whatever. I... Yeah. I hate that. Term, I just but... I want to get real. Want to get real fucking weird with it. That's what I plan on doing. Hell yeah! So. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Then, uh, Grime Dango says uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, one o tricks point never opn is amazing. Daniel Lopatin is a great dude. He's down with the girl dick, and he's yeah the godfather of vaporwave. <laughs> Hell yeah! Did I say it? I did it. Love... I pronounced something correctly. Yeah. The, the vaporwave community is very like bizarre because there's a lot of them that are like like really accepting progressive a lot of them are even like anti-capitalist leftists but then you have like some parts of the vaporwave community that are like just total fucking reactionaries who completely miss the point of like what vaporwave i think is actually doing but, yeah um, yeah that's a whole whole separate thing we could i talked about that with cause actually a while back and it was a great conversation so <laughs> people are saying fash wave in chat and grime dango says yeah. okay so so vaporwave is dead uh who <laughs> now we're jumping into the vaporwave discourse but listen let's keep the vaporwave discourse coming for a little hour. like it died a long long time ago yeah 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 that's that's fair that's fair um fash wave well, I mean, but I mean, okay. So Barbinger in in Twitch chat says it's just a sound, but that's not. That's so. That's like that's like saying, oh, the keep the politics out of my video style. games. You can't do that. Like, you will, you will, sure. you'll be a. You're going to to um, what's the word? You're gonna like blind yourself to parts of the music that are important. Oh, okay, that was a kappa. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was no kappa at the end. It's hard to had to do that. <laughs> well yeah. we can uh, that's let... the thing for me go for it go for it uh real quick sorry um yeah. is like there's nothing like explicitly political in a lot of my music because a lot of my stuff is very just like 
it's about like interpersonal relationships typically like that's what i'm kind of getting into and like social like actions so like yeah. there is some politics behind it but i don't really get like explicitly like you know anything like that and sometimes i want to involve it but i i don't really want to force it you know um, yeah so well, I, I like mean, some like political music, but sometimes it can be really like preachy. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, I think that can happen with nearly, um, nearly any type of art that that um, that you know tries to take on politics. It's very easy to fall into like ham fistedness, and mm -hmm. um, and, and that said, there are some um, sort of uh, golden ham fisted uh, tracks and works of art that that are that are great um even though they are yeah. ham-fisted i mean the one that comes to mind first is like a film is uh one that comes up here in chat all the time uh, starship troopers incredibly ham-fisted film mm -hmm. but done so uh in a great way um but but yeah i i feel you on that um for sure uh and and it is i think it is okay to like uh allow the the, pol the politics to like sublimate through um you know your you know your your takes on other things the very personal stuff i mean again i i think that everything is politics to a certain de degree but not what we you know colloquially refer to as politics like you don't have to write a song about donald trump in order for it to be meaningfully political i would argue that an album could you, what's that could you imagine like in in my realm of music if i try to make a song about trump like oh. how fucking cringy not good that would probably be now you have a challenge i mean you made chud wave yeah i did but i see that's it is a bit different but i think i think with the vaporwave-esque stuff i'll be able to be like a bit, a bit more political um with that kind of thing but yeah yeah that'd be a now you have a challenge on the table now you got to come up with a way to do a uh you got to do a you got to do what uh what's it -Trump track. yeah an anti-trump track you got to do what uh ben folds did with that one uh the the fake album that he made that was a parody of the actual album um fuck i'm trying to remember what the name of it was he he did a, the album was basically a double album and he had the tracks were the same name but they were different songs and they were just they were great but they were like like i would say cringe is the best way to put it like he parodied himself in the in the like fake versions of the songs and it was just like uh, uh -huh. like painfully cringily like it was like somebody was doing a fan album of his own work but it's his own he made it himself and it was wild um it's so good um fuck i want to remember the name of the album now but it's neither here nor there we can talk about that in the in the in the future oh uh yeah, sure. grime dango says i would suggest you take corporate muzak from the 90s and re reinterpret it through prog there we go hey i don't know if i could do that <laughs> but <laughs> it, it sounds too fascinating cringe. yeah <laughs> no no it, it might be like too much of a, a very different type of thing not up my alley i guess yeah. all right well do you want to move on to the next track now um i think i'm ready to hear yeah, some more it, tunes yeah if you want to play it i'm just going to run to the bathroom real yeah, quick yeah, and get some water it. but you can go ahead and sick yeah play it. So i'll be right back i will do all right, so this is track eight, Death Through a, Through a Sunlit Summer.
love it. Definitely the synth has come in in full. Um, yeah, yeah. We've got we've got a what the fuck with exclamation marks. We've got uh, like seriously getting Sky Chase from Sonic 2 vibes here. What a fucking bop. I feel like Sonic oh. is chilling on top of his plane waiting for the bad nicks to scroll by. It's awesome. That one felt super happy to me, says Antipodian Squid. <sighs> You know, it sounds like it. The lyrics um, a little sad though. It's been oh, sunny since little... you died. <laughs> yeah. So so that came to me when I was um I was really in a Batman. Um and there was this comic where uh Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder had like finished their run on Batman the New Fifty Two. And the final comic was like really beautiful and um it was like all rainy and like sad and i had this idea of like it's kind of a cliche of like something awful happens and someone dies or something and then the rain pours and you have this like sad scene from a film and it's like i just kind of wanted to like contradict that and be like you know someone dies and the world is sunny and beautiful and and everyone's still moving and like enjoying life and you're there like it, it, it again goes back to that theme of like even the external forces which like drive the world are contradicting the emotions you're experiencing the so it's like yeah you're, you're like so the lyric is like i've been um asking god to take away sunlight and like let the rain fall from the sky to like kind of just let me like be with that pain and, and feel it expressed through some other vessel than my own like inner turmoil um yeah. so but and oh and the and the cool thing is is that if you listen close the synth that does that cool line you hear it go beep 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 and it's like mimicking a um what's that thing in the hospital the that's doing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so th there's that in there which i i thought was a bit clever but... yeah i think it's clever as fuck <laughs> oh shit yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm giving away the I, I'm giving away all the Easter eggs. Listen, but, that's what people uh, are here for. Got a lot of. People. I hope I don't sound like full of myself, but there's these cool little details that people might not notice, and I hope you know that that they do and they can like appreciate it. So, oh, Marinara, have a wonderful time. Have a wonderful date, Marinara. Have a have nice. a great night. And Marinara said, uh, "Now that I'm in my feelings, it's date time. See you later, everyone." With people hands. Good luck. Um, Grime Dango says, "You ever listen to Talk Talk and zone the fuck out, Snowdrift?" Mm, I I haven't Talk Talk no. Maybe there's a maybe there's a recommendation for you. Yeah, um, Talk Talk. Hmm. Yeah, uh, just just so uh, <laughs> Grime Dango says, "Jesus, bub." <laughs> um, but that's that uh uh buddy bro guy friend. Um, but but yeah, the uh the. Uh, uh, Grime Dango always makes incredible music recommendations uh, for me, and I I assume that that talent probably will carry to other uh, other people as well. Grime Dango has an incredible um, like encyclopedic understanding of like good music. Yeah, big brain. Exactly, exactly. Grime Dango, you have big, big, big brain. Oh, yeah. Very big. Uh, play chess with yourself, with your own brain. Level big. Yeah, like the 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 Wojak on the brain elephant um size big um but yeah it's... yeah we're getting into like the last quarter of the album which it doesn't it doesn't get any happier from here folks okay it actually gets it gets heavier <laughs> that's um, okay that's all I, right we're yeah, here for the ride but um yeah but yeah so um one of yeah. the one of the great um, things about art is that you can do that like uh you can uh Cap encapsulate stuff and it you know it sticks with you but it's not like uh you know <laughs> it's not like i don't know i guess it's like going on a roller coaster versus like uh versus like actually falling off a cliff <laughs> like you know that the song the tracks will end and and you'll be able to remember them and think about them and they might give you some mood but you're you're it's ultimately a, a encapsulated experience yeah and and i do like to think that like the point of the tracks isn't really like just to like depress you or anything. It's, it's a cathartic thing. And, and I don't think the songs are like necessarily like hard to like listen to uh, oh. per se. I think 
if anything, it's just like something you can just like cut on and like, you know, just think about stuff or, or work on something or, or whatever it may be. Um, I, for me, I, I create like stuff. I mean, first and foremost, it's really just me doing things for myself, but I like to think that it can be like a form of solace for people to just like, even if it's not the thing that they're like completely entranced by or listening to, like it can just like kind of set a mood and like, and be something comfortable to like put on. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I that was my experience. I mean, you saw my review, I'm sure, um, that I posted, but uh, I didn't until oh, like didn't? earlier today. I I saw on Bandcamp. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, well, I'll read so. it off for the chat once uh, once we get to the end. But but yeah, you you got my uh, my thoughts. I I feel like I was given a gift with this uh, this album. So yeah, um, yeah. So you have succeeded in that goal of of making something that. Um, can be incredibly cathartic, uh, for sure. Mm. Yeah. Do we want to move on to track nine? Yeah. So this is my other favorite, um, for sure. Um, Excellent. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, here we go. This is track nine reveries. We meet again. Oh. I've got to refresh the page. There we go. Sorry, I didn't mean. To... Oh God, the website's being so weird now. Apologies about that. Didn't mean to jump into the beginning of the next track. Um, That's all good. God, I I really love the, uh, the 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 slapping beat. There is so yeah. wonderful, and it's like um, I don't know. It, to me, this this track like sla like it, it like it hits me with this like specific, very specific flavor of a like anxiety <laughs> like and it's mm. like the type that you again like i mean even the lyrics is like i see you every every uh night i see you every night and it's like and then there's like the beat just like kept keeps coming back like it's like snapping like it's like snapping you back to this like thought of like oh my god am, am i like is it is it is it happening like am i doing things right am i okay am i you know am i pissing someone off like it's that sort of like very unique type of anxiety that can only come from like somebody you care really a lot about emotionally like i don't know that's what that's what you know i got i got hit by i hope that uh i hope that i read it correctly <laughs> 
Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah so the, the fun story about that track is um, I, I literally, I take a lot of power naps and um, when I do, sometimes I wake up and I have a song in my head um, and then I go like put it into logic and create it um and that was one of those times i literally took a power nap like 20 minutes and i woke up with those with the lyrics um i think forever it will tear me apart until the moment that i see you again and every night i see you in my dreams and that that every night i see you in my dreams line i knew i wanted to repeat it and i can i even had the the the, the bass line in my head uh, yeah. like behind that and everything so like, i literally woke up with the song it was super weird and um and i put it all like right there and so my favorite part about that track is like yeah it's very punchy and it's brief and it like it also kind of pulls back um kind of into that 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 focus of the album of that like of that yearning um and um and that like separation and um and just that um that anxiety uh, of like like <clears throat> throughout a lot of the the album there are these references to like having dreams and 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 dreaming of being with someone and that's pretty consistent throughout it and um it's just um yeah that one yeah it it it, it hits different for yeah, sure yeah yeah it's a there's a there's a there's another one of those sort of things. It's like a unique sensation that comes from um, having someone appear in your dream, someone who's very close to you in your dreams. Um, and like, it's almost like there's like many different ways that this can happen where it's like, sometimes it's like, Oh, like it's so obvious that they're the dream version of, of that person. But there are other times where it's like, like it almost feels like you lived a memory, but not quite. And that, that can make it hurt and sting even more. And it is like, again, like I feel like in this track, it, it portrays that feeling very well, especially with like the, the punchiness of the, of the beat is just like, it's like, it's like, again, you know, you mentioned the power now, but it's like waking up and just being like, okay, like, all right. Oh yeah. Like, that was just a dream and like, you know it and you know it all the way down. It's a dream, but the emotions that were there in the moment of the dream where you're, you know, in a dream and you don't necessarily know it's a dream, obviously are completely real and they can stick with you. And it's like, Oh God, oh, yeah. that can sting that can slap. Yeah. So yeah. And, and yeah, like literally the, the first line of the album is, um, and leaving with sunrise. It's, um, I saw you in my dreams once again. And, yeah. um, yeah, that's again just kind of that, that Comes theme back of the album that it keeps coming back to. Yeah. Um and yeah, like my again, I guess one of my, my favorite lyrics from this track was um the line, um could you tell me if I fucked up your heart, have I committed an immeasurable sin? It's like Jesus, like yeah, <laughs> that feeling, like if even having to ask that question to someone or or, or feeling like you just completely like torn something apart um or tethered a, a cord with uh with someone you care deeply about it's like that's it's just yeah it's heavy it's a heavy um, emotion it's yeah like again like and and sometimes it's like there's i mean you have good reason again like uh you have good reason to to like fear like people have good reason to fear being able to harm someone who can also harm you like one of the things of like being with somebody is how mutually vulnerable you can become with one another and how uniquely um someone close to you has the ability to affect your emotional state and you theirs and uh yeah that anxiety of like oh did i seriously fuck up here like am i a like a, has have i become like a bad person or like have i done something that like i am going to be ashamed of and you can't always know the answer to that question, which is part of the reason why it can become an anxiety. Even if like from someone on the outside looking in might be like, well, you know, you're probably overthinking this, but you can't really easily determine if you're overthinking it in the moment, because it's just like, how do you disentangle yourself from emotions that are that strong from feelings about somebody else that are so strong and knowing, especially if you've ever had pain with that person, if that person has ever hurt you, then you know it's 
you know firsthand what it can be like to be hurt and not wanting to do that to someone else or or whatever yeah yeah absolutely yeah um yeah uh there's not a whole lot more with that one um I I I mentioned on on the Twitter site that there was a track that has a sample uh from Super Smash Brothers Melee. It's like an audio file of of uh Fox and that's actually the track that it's on. Oh really? <laughs> I didn't even catch yeah. it. It's not obvious, but it's in there. That's but, so yeah. funny. That's that's incredible. It's one of my favorite games, so I was like, yeah, let me just toss that in there. Why the fuck not? Ah, the Smash lover. Yeah, the oh, fuck. I, I love Smash. I'm terrible at Smash. Terrible at Smash, but I love Smash. Uh are you are you a Fox main? Uh in Melee, I'm I main Fox. Um I kind of play some other characters, but uh depending on the game, kind of depends on who I play. But in Melee, Fox is just the best character. Yeah, so. he's, he's overpowered. Motherfucker. Oh, yeah. A number of oh. times my cousins have bullied me with playing fucking uh fox this damn up 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 smash is got to be one of the most annoying fucking things in the world um, oh yeah uh oh we got a we got a, a sheik is greater than fox in melee uh fa- uh comment here with a kappa thankfully but uh, okay okay i was about to say yeah. i mean sheik is is really cool yeah. um but uh definitely Uh-oh. i mean you could have debates about like top 3 in melee for sure but but she is not top three even. She could be like, be like t- top ten, top eight maybe. Yeah. Depending on where the meta is, I know I I play a lot of Smash. I I I, I know some things about Smash. So. I I just like playing Jigglypuff, nope. and Isabel. Jigglypuff is fun. I yeah, love yeah. Jigglypuff. No, I mean, I, I'm actually Ultimate okay with Jigglypuff. Too. Yeah. Oh, Ultimate's fun as fuck. Yeah. I've been having a lot of. I've had a lot of. We've had that for a while, and I've played it quite a bit. Um. I'm just no good at like when it comes down to playing people who are actually good at the game. I'm just a dead weight. So, <laughs> but it's then fun. again, as long as you're having fun, yeah, I have a lot of fun with yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, I I actually really enjoyed when um, Piranha Plant came out. Um, the Piranha Plant character is okay. like super creative, and I really like the way that character plays. Is that a challenge? Uh oh, Windleby wants to challenge you at Smash. I like Nucario. Um... I just think they're neat. <laughs> Yeah, Lucario is fun. I had a friend who I used to play against who was pretty good with Lucario. I mean, so I can't play Melee online, but I can play because I don't have a PC for it. But I can play Ultimate, and um, if anyone wants to play, you can shoot me a DM. I, I, we can play. There I'm not go. particularly good at Ultimate, but yeah, I'd be down to play. Maybe that'll change once the challenge has arisen. You'll you'll get the spirit for Ultimate and just go like that. We'll, we'll see. And you'll I get well. I got really into it when it first came out, but I have um I have issues with my hands, so I oh. can't. I can't do it, you know. No, that's fair. Yeah. Well, the 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 the, the, the um, switch controllers aren't exactly uh, friendly to. Uh, I have very large hands, uh, very long mm. fingers, and those fucking controllers give me the worst oh. cramps. Holy shit! Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah. They were definitely oh, yeah. not designed with uh, bigger hands in mind. Um, All for me. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> just for babies yeah it's a it's it's a controller for ants yeah Um, yeah it's joy cons too yeah manga hands oh do i have manga hands is that what that's called when you have like really long fingers maybe i guess certain manga i I know like uh i know in like uh what are they called shoujo mangas that is a stylistic thing but um i don't know if that's true across all of them um yeah do you want to move on to the next track yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. This is the return of bittersweet. Mm-hmm. Bittersweet, but mostly bitter, actually. <laughs> Just leave. So we 
that's got a quite a swell in the energy there, huh? Yeah, it's like yeah. wow. Like I, I I love the re, the the return of of uh, of, of bittersweet. Um, there's okay, this is gonna sound silly, but there's a there's a a scene in you ever seen the movie uh, Interstellar? It was the uh, God. You know what? I haven't, but I really need to. It it was good. It, it looks it, like the type of movie I would love. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it, it's really good. It's a very enjoyable uh, film. It has some sort of like. Um, you know, it's it's a uh, what's his name? Fuck, I, I I can't even think of his name right now. The guy who did the Batman Returns shit, the Rise of the Dark Knight Rises. Oh, Christopher Batman. Nolan. Yeah, Christopher Nolan. It's the it's a Christopher Nolan film. So, um, there's it's like you know it's not like the deepest film ever, but it is an incredibly beautiful looking film, and the soundtrack is fantastic, and there's a lot of just like really evocative scenes, and yeah, Nolan, I sl- slipped my mind completely. Um, but there's this one scene at the end where like the character is like just like sort of bathed in in light and in um this sort of like cosmic scene and it's just it, it, it this this sort of reminded me of that like this the synths kind of like washing over you and this like like o- overwhelming but but like at the same time it's not like it's not like bad overwhelming you know it's like it's like uh i don't know it, it's kind of like when you when you lose when you lose the grip on your emotions and you're kind of just like, okay, I'm in them now. And, and mm. all of these, all the shit is sort of flowing over me, but, but I'm here just kind of looking at it and, and watching it. And I don't know. I, I really, lo- I really love this, the, the way that like the, the synth swell in this song, it's like, it, it's like a, uh, it's like a, a, a it's glorious in a, bl- in a bittersweet way, you know, uh, obviously the title's named bittersweet, but I yeah. intended yeah, yeah, pun yeah. intended. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so yeah, that track um, was like I had read a book called uh, "The First Fifteen Lives of Harry August," which I talk a lot about because it did a lot to my brain. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's it's about this guy who uh, who dies, and every time he dies he's reborn as the same person but he remembers everything from his past life so he's reborn the same person same time same circumstances everything right but he remembers his past lives yeah yeah and um it made me really think deeply about like this determinism versus you know free will kind of thing which i still go back and forth on but but um the point of the track uh which is like pretty pronounced in the chorus and like the second verse is like um just like it's bittersweet to like have these like really nice memories and like relish them and look back but to also know that like i'm never gonna feel that with this person again i'm never gonna go through that again there's no way to bring it back um and and the the refrain that comes up earlier on the on the album which is like uh, you say it's all for the best so you leave with no regrets and it's just like it, it's just like a breakup kind of a song like yeah. a, a post-mortem on a breakup at least of just someone that i've been with for like a really long time and and me just like kind of process that and um that song was pretty much all done like super quick the only like there were little things that I changed. The The biggest thing that really helped the song feel done was the very ending where you have the bridge repeated and the chorus, like both happening vocally, mm-hmm. but it's very drowned out. And it's like kind of just added this nice layer to the track. Um, and so, yeah, that, that one. Oh, and also initially the song was, um, Sometimes I just have like dumbass song titles until I figure out a real one. Uh, it was originally titled uh, "R.I.P. Nujabes" because when I came up with that piano melody, that, I that love line, piano. I really, yeah, it reminded me a lot of like Nujabes, who was like a huge um, influence for me in like high school and stuff. He um, awesome. he made a lot of the music that was on like Adult Swim and mm. a lot of those like anime, um, like fucking um, oh gosh. Got some fans. Um, what were the, 
the cowboy bebop i think mm-hmm. he did some of the music for um I, I i'm blanking now but i'm sure people in chat would know yeah the new Jabez is incredible it's um, amazing so that was kind of an inspiration samurai champloo yes like. yeah, yes yeah. that's awesome um yeah I, I i have a huge soft spot for piano piano is the instrument that i play um i've played it for my whole life so p- piano always gets me um i i love it um yeah it's fuck like now now it's got me thinking of um the the you're mentioning of like the the retaining of the memories there's a um there's this really great um oh oh yeah i had actually two things i wanted to mention one uh if you are fascinated uh as i am by the topic of like determinism versus free will or whatever i highly recommend reading um the book freedom evolves by daniel dennett and you might hear that name and go, ah, oh, the, yeah. the new horseman of the of atheism or whatever. But that book is fantastic. Uh, I'm familiar. Yeah, it's a really yeah, yeah. interesting read. Um, but yeah, I, I actually he's, he's, what's that? Go ahead. I was gonna say he's one of the few like philosophers who I think can make a compelling argument for uh, for free will and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, using that mathematics and computer science, <laughs> which is like Yeah. It took me two listens to actually like feel like I had a, an idea of what I was listening to because it felt like it was too big brain even for me. I've literally listened to it two, uh, on audiobook two times on two separate very long road trips. And I'm like, okay, I think I'm getting I'm beginning to grasp this now. My brain is growing a few uh, a few sizes. Um, I gained a new wrinkle. But it, it's a great read. Um, yeah. yeah, and it was certainly yeah. certainly thought provoking. Um, but then the other thing too is um, there is a uh, sci- there's a sci-fi series um, called the Commonwealth Saga um, by Peter F. Hamilton, which I really really love. And one of the things that they like uh, deal with, like that, like one of the topics that's sort of explored in that series is like um, people will uh like rejuvenate themselves and live like multiple lives basically um like you know they'll go from like the age of like you know they'll get to like 60 or so and then they're just like okay time for a new rejuvenation back to being 20 again and uh you have like they they have in this future discovered like memory crystals that you can keep and like a lot of people specific like will will uh have like backups of their memories and like offload some of the memories you know just for functional reasons because it's like oh my god remembering like eight lifetimes of experiences at any moment in any day makes it incredibly difficult can be make can make it incredibly difficult to actually live your day and it's like or to not get lost in those things because it's just eight like 800 years ago i had this thing that stuck with me and i still have this memory of it and it's like holy shit so that's like an interesting thing and there's like of course um some people like don't do that and some people do and they explore like how why different the different characters in the book make the decisions that they do and like what motivated them and how it how it affects them and whatever it's really super interesting um there's like a yeah, it's like- yeah it's it's super super um interesting like i mean fuck like there's a, one of the characters is like this sort of like um <laughs> like externally very stoic and uh like people like he's kind of understood for keeping a cool head and in in like hot situations but once you get into his character like you realize that is not what's going on under the surface and like he he is like like very attached to his memories and keeps them all around and like you know he still manages to like function and to be really good at what he does but it's like it is not what it appears you know like everyone thinks he's like oh he's just like you know able to cut through all this stuff but in truth he's actually like it it takes a lot of processing and remembering all these things for him to be able to do the things that he does it's super fascinating um but yeah that just made me think of that with this with this track um and discussing like you know your inspiration from that other book it's like oh this made me think of of this sci-fi book that had a, a similar theme um but you know a little different yeah um, yeah that sounds awesome yeah sounds it's like fantastic it. yeah uh, i highly recommend by the way i highly recommend the commonwealth saga to anybody who likes sci-fi especially sci-fi that can really get you thinking about like oh shit i never really thought about this aspect of society or or um or or like how we would interact with you know alien species in this way and like that's one of the things i loved most about commonwealth is that i felt like it handled uh like it handles how humans would probably more realistically engage with aliens than basically any other 
series I've ever uh, I've ever seen. Like it just does a really really good job at like I don't want to say like it doesn't because it doesn't humanize the aliens. That's the thing. It, they're they're just other sentient beings, and it's able to maintain that distance yeah. in a way that's super super interesting. So I highly recommend that series. Um, but yeah, um, the Expanse was what got me to think about UBI. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, wait, that's the isn't that from the second series, the the Void trilogy though? Maybe not. There is a second series that's also really good, but I don't like it. I I okay, I shouldn't say I don't like it as much. I I didn't get as into it as the first the first trilogy or yeah, I think it was a trilogy. The Commonwealth Saga was three books, I think. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's a little bit of a side note. Um, yeah, uh do you want to move on to the 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 final track here? Yeah, absolutely all right yeah, let's do let's it do Dre- dreaming let's solitude fading with moonlight what's that sorry oh i was just saying yeah it's two two songs in one two for the price of one baby amazing <laughs> that you you heard yeah. you got it here the best deal on the web two songs for one track 11 dreaming solitude fading with moonlight here we go
there we have it the concluding track how wonderful i i love 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 the guitar all throughout this and uh it just like it's the acoustic portion in the in the in the first half is just it just comes in so strongly it's so good um wow yeah breathtaking yeah that that song dreaming's uh, solitude took like a really long time to get right um <clears throat> like i wrote it and recorded like the idea in one sitting mm -hmm. but it was like this process of getting the acoustic guitars right and making the end of it fit right and then i finally came back to it a couple months ago <clears throat> and i added the pads in which really filled it out and i was like oh fuck i i could like feel it i was like i got it okay. and and the last thing I had to do was to add when the main vocals drop out, <clears throat> I added the, the chorus line back in, but like, again, kind of distantly and going from ear to ear. Yeah. Um, and that again, just kind of filled that space up a bit. And, um, <clears throat> and then um, a while after that, I was playing with some chords that reminded me a bit of the first song. And I was like, oh okay i i have an idea of what i should do here so that's how the second song came along um and um i i t i recorded it with just the guitar and vocals and then i i actually slowed it down and pitch shifted it but um i i hope that after people hear that it's pretty easy to to put together kind of the what's happening um between all of the tracks and the flow of the album <clears throat> once Absolutely. you get into that 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 last that second to last or the the last last song yeah. where it literally opens up referencing the first track on the album and then closes with the same melody that closes out the first track of the album yeah. um <laughs> i love that kind of shit like the 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 repeated phrases and melodies that are like kind of coming back yeah, and yeah. just I was really like really happy to do that and um and to kind of close it off on that on that note which I I like to finish projects on like um 
kind of like a positive or at least like a um a solvent or a solving yeah, like resolutionary probably, feeling yeah. but this to me didn't have room for that or really allow it so instead it it i'm not it just it leaves you kind of hanging a bit and yeah. and tells you to go back and do it again <laughs> um <laughs> and that's kind again. of the, Think yeah that's kind again. of a yeah, that's just like kind of the meta narrative of like kind of leaning into this deterministic framework of like we're just fighting the same battles in like maybe a little bit of, of a different form, but it's 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 repeating all the same. And so to have songs referenced in other songs <clears throat> and to have these constant themes and to have it begin and end in the same place um, of course, you have leaving with sunrise, which is kind of contrasted by fading with moonlight, but it's it's all the leaning into itself again, yeah. you know. Um, and so that's kind of the the again the meta narrative that the album, the story that it's really trying to tell. Yeah, and and I mean, I mean that's how I mean it, it's a very again it's a very organic. Uh, it, it has a, a certain. Um, like an organic process to it of like, I mean, cause we do this, right? Like we, when we have these emotional things that happen in our lives, especially with relationships, I feel, um, you just revisit it and revisit it and revisit it and you revisit it. <laughs> it seems like sometimes like it's almost, it can be almost impossible to get out of those loops. It can feel like at times. And then like, I like that in, in, in this track, it's sort of like, there's like a part of like, it's like you're kicking yourself for, I should have expected this. I should have seen this coming. I should have, you know, but at the same time, it's like, like how, how can you really is it it's not even fair it's not even fair to kick yourself for it because no one no one can see these things coming we get blinded anyone gets blinded when they're vulnerable when they're open and when they're connected with somebody else you no one can foresee that that's why it's like you know it, it, it's like it's it's impossible uh it seems like and i mean maybe there's certain elements that you're like looking back on it with hindsight you're like oh maybe this should have been a sign for me but you can you could barely ever make those things out when you're this, when they're this close to you and they're in your heart and in your mind constantly. It, it is only through like revisiting and breaking it down and, and, and seeing it in different lights. And that's something I like. I really like that. Like, again, you have these recurring themes through this whole album. Um, but the album is also devoted to bringing them back a little bit different every single time. And, and there's like, it's like, there's a different yeah. mood around it. Like in the same way that like, you can revisit the same memory in a different context. And it's like, oh, I see something I didn't see before. There's a different light here. There's a different sound to it. I know it's, I know it's the same kind of, but is it, has it not changed with me as I've changed? And I love that. I love that about, about this album. And I think you really nailed that. So, Yeah. Um, thank you yeah yeah i i hope that there there it doesn't my my concern was like like sonically starting to sound redundant at any points or like uh i really want an album or a project to be cohesive without mm -hmm. sounding redundant or like i'm doing the same thing again and again so it was a bit tricky of like i want to revisit these these ideas but in a different light and also like give it enough of a mixture of like sounds and, and, and tones and, and things that are happening to keep it fascinating. So, yeah, and, and, and distortions. that's and, largely, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, so. and that fits very well again into the, into the, the other like sort of, uh, you know, character of, of a lot of your music that you've done of the, the, the dreaminess of it is like, that is a, a characteristic of dreams that things that you're familiar with become strangely distorted. Um, and sometimes in pleasant ways and sometimes in very unpleasant ways. And, uh, but, but that is the, that is the truth of dreams. Like the, our, our mind revisits these things and like, I don't know who knows why exactly, you know, like it's one of those things that, you know, like much like the, the idea of like free will that it's, damn near impossible to know if we'll ever get any sort of meaningful answer or if we even need one um you know but it's like this happens yeah. to us and and in our dreams we revisit places we revisit i mean um again like 
and and this is like a very visceral experience for me of, of like revisiting literal like sometimes there will be the same place that i've been in a dream and it'll occur again in the future and it's like it's like oh wait i know this is the place but this dream is like feels so different and yeah yeah it's it's uh someone says we i think we can officially unofficially call this stream the don't text your x challenge <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah yeah true I'm i will say um that while a lot of it is um romantically inclined um i i would say that there's different avenues uh some of these songs could be perceived as um, absolutely not that there's anything wrong with it, but when I'm writing, um, uh, I, I'm being intentionally vague a bit here, but there, there, there's a different fight for me personally going on with some of these tracks. Um, for sure. So, um, but yeah, there's, Hey, I, I fucking love Drake. Okay. Or at least I did for a very long time. So yeah. <laughs> there's definitely a, a pull of that. Just like, um fucking like marvin's room kind of a thing happening <laughs> yeah it's like oh, i mean man. i i think that that's important too like i mean um there's like there are parallels and i think i think sometimes um you know with relationships it's like it's like one of those things where it's it's so um visceral and 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 almost universal that it's like, it's an easy thing to tap on, but it actually parallels a lot of our other experiences. And I could, I mean, again, I can think of like, like my, my, my fallout with one of my best friends, like, holy shit, are there some serious parallels, even though there wasn't like, it wasn't a romantic relationship yeah. at all. It's just like, Oh my God, like the feelings of um, like, of like, whether it's regret or guilt or, or anger, because it's like, maybe you feel like, like you're mad that they don't feel that way. And then there's also like, fuck, there's like so many different things. It can be, uh, like there was points where I would say, like, I could recall points in my life where I would even feel this certain emotions that were portrayed in this, in this album about religion. Um, and how, uh, mm. when I was super, super religious, it was like, um, there were times in my life where I was like, wow, I really wish I could go back to that, to that sort of life where I, um, I, I think like, oh, like, like I could be reassured in this way. That's just like, um, yeah. that's like, that's like just not good. And it wasn't good. And I knew that, but it's like, yeah. there, there were moments like, I mean, hell, I remember moments of my life in, um, suffering, like where I was suffering from something or in pain. And it's just like, Oh, like, I wish I could go back to the way that I was when I believed that like, per, like prayer would do something, even though I know that that came with like talk, like extremely toxic downsides. But there is that, mm -hmm. that, um, again, that, that those parallels run through multiple types of things that we experience, not just relationships. Um, but, but, um, you know, not just relationships with a partner necessarily, I should say, but relationships with sure people, with romantic groups, relations. With, yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a similarly, uh, a toxic and contentious relationship with religion. I grew up in a very Christian household and I had a, held on to those beliefs for a long time. And like most of my twenties has been undoing, that uh that mental damage <laughs> that i uh, endured for a very long time so that i could see some of that kind of sprouting out a bit here and there for sure yeah that's um something that i like i i imagine we probably have some things um in in common there i grew up in like a very extreme sect of uh, american evangelicalism that i rec mm -hmm. I, I think is fairly categorized as a cult um uh extreme you know and so yeah it's something i've talked about here yes. um yeah um yeah yeah so like uh it's it's um yeah it, it's something that hits close to home and i i think maybe perhaps sometimes we, we could have a, sometime we could have a talk about that because uh, i actually i talk about it on stream relatively frequently but you know it's like random it seems to come up at random um but uh yeah my experience with religion was um very very much the same as what you said there of like uh undoing things it feels like and unlearning mm -hmm. these these uh 
patterns and and habits that are foist upon you and they do affect so many other parts of life um so yeah yes yeah yeah absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah i'd be down to do a religion stream yeah Just oh go i've been trying to get people for hitchens yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it's no, interesting no, i have no. like uh i have a lot of um i have a lot of um critiques of religion and actually recently i've i've been modifying my critiques a little bit and um and sometimes that has been met with a little bit of uh pushback from from like sort of uh, a lot of the more fervent atheists in this space but um mm. i assure people like it's like it's not like a, it's not like i i am like friendly towards the catholic church um i just uh in in thinking about it i realized that like a lot of my views on religion have been colored very specifically um by my experience with a particular a particularly toxic brand of religion um sure. that really isn't representative of all religion in the world and that like i don't want to be blinded by my own bias even if my bias is very justified like i think that like religions that yeah. operate like the catholic church or religions that um operate like the cult that I grew up in like are horrific. And I think that there are enormous problems with the dogma and the teachings of those religions that lead into it. But um, I think I would be uh, remiss to acknowledge that there are religions that function very differently and that don't have the same um, toxic outcomes. Um, but nonetheless, like discussing religion, especially organized religion is something that's in and critiquing that is something that's very important to me and always will be. Um, I think Um because if I had never escaped the religion that I was involved in, oh, I can't even imagine what my life would be like right now. First of all, I, you know, well, there definitely wouldn't be this stream, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, we could definitely have a talk about this. I, I've been trying to get there's been a bunch of people arguing about religion on my timeline lately, and I said, hey, you guys want to come on my stream and like do a discussion about it? And nobody nobody volunteered i was like well, uh, you guys were arguing on twitter about it um, come on do it on here don't argue about religion on twitter it's no, the worst no place balls. to argue about it now i mean i don't want to exactly. i didn't even want to debate i just wanted to host it for other people who were fighting on my my twitter sure. timeline it's like damn but yeah i i might have to um yeah the timeline is for cowards <laughs> true Girl. dnd remember Girl. rule number one of the of the demon mama rules of twitter dnd do not discourse and religion is definitionally Girl. the discourse yeah 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 donald trump says mm -hmm. that religion is bad because they didn't give him enough votes damn donald damn true oh no you're going back to church grime dango oh shit do Yikes. not discourse uh oh we got this here don't make me tap the sign. Yes, this is so perfect. Holy shit! I'm unironically. I want to share this with the with the chat here. Look at this. Look at this. Gay fesh. This meme. Oh my god. I'm gonna pin this. I'm gonna pin this. I swear to God. Can I pin this? I'm gonna pin this. Holy shit. Oh my god. Amazing. Holy shit. I will. I'm gonna pin this to my fucking Twitter. I swear to God. I need to make a full. I need to make a full infographic that teaches people the ways of Twitter. I know a lot of people struggle, and I'm here to bring them the code. Haha! Uh, -ha, good thing that I can't read. Shit. I, I didn't plan for the for the for the non-readers who are on Twitter reading things. Yeah. Well, uh, Snowdrift. It was absolutely wonderful having you on. Um. Uh, ge genuinely uh thank you for uh for fielding my um my noobish questions um and allowing us to enjoy your music here um is there anything else you want to say before you you know plug yourself and and um we send you out and then i gotta do some video games yeah video game time um yeah no of course like thank you so much for like taking the time to have me on and have this uh cozy little session and 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 give me a, a chance to kind of explore this stuff um because yeah it doesn't get to happen so often um i i did want to real quick i, I don't want to overstep but i guess like if anyone in chat had any questions or anything before i do head out please do i'd be willing to answer some super quick again i know you have things yeah, to do, no, so no, i don't no. want to hold you up no rush that. like but, uh um i would love i would love that um so uh but but yeah um 
thank you. Yeah. Again, for like hosting me and, and, you know, putting me on a platform to maybe have some other people listen to it. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, and I look forward to what I'm able to do in the future and what you, you keep doing with your stream. Cause you're doing super fucking well. It's yeah. been really cool to see your numbers and like your growth and stuff. Yeah. Um, we've been, we've been like speeding it. upwards. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. pulled, we pulled, uh, we pulled between like i'm gonna guess the average for this stream is probably gonna be somewhere around 60 and that was on a day when the among us youtubers all the popular youtubers are doing their among us <laughs> yeah. stream and we still pulled that many yeah we're doing pretty good yeah uh Hell devious yeah, chillster says how much money would i have to pay you to make an official demon mama theme song hmm well that's a good that's um, gonna have to be a question you'd have to ask snowdrift which you are now, I sure, guess. Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you shoot me a DM on on Twitter, um, <laughs> um, sorry, uh, yeah, shoot me a DM on Twitter and we can talk about it. Snowdrift Moon, just all one word. Um, I the the stuff I've done for Chud has been um has been unasked, so I haven't asked anyone for money. But uh, but if someone wants to commission me to do like a track for someone or something like that, then. Uh, you know, not much, but some money would be nice because it's takes a little bit of time. Yeah, that's my that's my prerogative with it. I I tr I try to make my stuff as accessible and and cheap or free as possible. And all of my stuff on Bandcamp, other than this album, I think is pay what you want. But for this album, I was like, uh, you know, it took me a while, and I had to literally pay money to put it on <laughs> onto uh, Spotify and yeah. so on. So. You know, music industry is a fucking meme. Yeah, Sucks. Uh, that uh, all of these, all creative industries are a meme at this point. It's actually yeah. horrifying. It's actually a nightmare. But Spotify, particularly, is like Spotify is like right up there with like. Wait, I can't say this. Uh, it's up there with a very popular streaming platform that many people are on. That is also ridiculously exploitative. Um, let's just put it that True. way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Busy B asks, any tips for managing imposter syndrome? Oh God! I mean, if you have any for me, then then please send them <laughs> my way. I mean, um, for me, like I've been doing music for so long um, that it doesn't really occur unless I'm doing something weird or un uncomfortable. Um, my kind of just like general guide for like any artistic endeavors that you're pursuing is like have your group of friends that you bounce ideas off of and you know who's going to give you what kind of feedback so to make that a little bit less vague i have some friends who anything i send them they're going to be like yo this is fucking awesome and they're going to hype me up and that's great i love that sometimes you just need that friend who's gonna be like this is fucking awesome it's, it's fantastic i love it okay and then you have friends who are maybe more familiar with the type of thing you're doing and who are going to listen to it and be like this is good but like here's where you can improve mm -hmm. um and like give you some real good feedback and then once you've done it like to the point where it's finished then they hear it again and they're like there you go you fucking got it like yeah. so it's really good to have like that support system of people who are going to be realistic and practical and then people who are just going to be like hype you up and, and make you feel really good about what you're doing um i think those are like easy ways to kind of mitigate that imposter syndrome and um and also just remember like you're doing it for like you you know you're doing it to enjoy it and um and f you know fuck other people dude <laughs> like it's your thing like do do whatever you want like yeah like there are rules to certain forms of creativity but they're they're like guidelines you know just they're more just, like just guidelines exactly okay. they're guidelines yeah I mean, you're right you're right i i, I would yeah. concur with you on that as far as my own experience goes um like uh obviously there is a there's often um, especially, I mean, I'm a streamer, so like I, I've got the attention addiction, you know, um, it's just a fact like, um, but when I set out to make this stream, um, one of the things that I set as like part of my like sort of vision for the stream is like, um, my goal 
is to build like a really fucking cool community and make entertaining content that like is like fun to watch that I enjoy to make. And like that comes before everything else. And even though like, that's like, Oh, well the, the community is other people. Well, yeah, but my, but I'm doing that because I want to build the community. If somebody came in and was like, here's a bunch of money to do this thing that would make your, your community go in a different direction. I would be like, mm, no, um, because you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not like, because that's not what I'm in it for. I'm in it here to make the thing that I want to make. And I, I've found that I struggled with that type of advice in the past before I, I feel like I understood it, which was like, you know, people say, oh, you got to do it for yourself, which like, I think some people take that to mean like, oh, you have to enjoy every minute of what you're doing. Um, and that is oh. not true. Like <laughs> art is yeah. good. There's going to be times where you're just like racking your brain. Um, and, um, and you're just miserable making something or whatever. Um, but it's in in pursuit of what you, you want out of that thing. You know what I mean? Whether it's to complete an album or to complete a track or to or to make a, an experiment that's like, I want to see what I can do with this. That's what it means to pursue something for yourself. Is to, is to decide on the thing that you want, whatever it may be, and go for it for that reason and not for other reasons. Not because you're being badgered into it. Or because, um, you know, because you feel like you're, you're obligated to, or whatever it's to, to, um, you know, uh, I don't know. Again, maybe this is my own unique thing, but when I've heard people say the advice of like, like do it for yourself in the past, I've always was like, in my mind, it was always like, oh, well then I'm supposed to just go like do a work of art just for the pure enjoyment of it. Well, but sometimes it's not enjoyable to actually make the thing sometimes, but it's, it's actually okay to want to aim for like the final product or to aim for an outcome. Um, those are a way of doing something for yourself as well. Um, just to sort of add my thoughts onto what you were saying, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the process itself is like sometimes the most incredible thing ever. Like th that process of creating itself is like, can be extremely gratifying and cathartic and um to, to even add even a little bit more to that it's like my big thing is like really this is something i try to have to work through but is to like not worry too much about the numbers game like how many people are viewing what you're doing or listening or whatever it may be like you know don't sweat that stuff too much like if you do something that you're like you think is really good and you're proud of it and you finish it and you feel like you've done it then like that's a fucking accomplishment in and of itself and it's something to be proud of and like even if you know you you have like small numbers on what you're doing now or or whatever like you know it's it's still amazing you know to to be able to do that and and to finish something that took a lot of patience and and consideration and um yeah for me i'm just i'm humbled anytime anyone like listens to what i do and then is nice enough to be like give me some like insightful like oh i really like this thing or i really like this track like that's in that's always going to be really cool to me so and with that real quick i just want to hop in and say if you liked this music you should hop over to Snowdrift's Bandcamp and leave a review. Leave a review of your thoughts. Yeah, that would be sick. I See, would it would that. be, cost nothing to leave a review. You've heard the tracks, leave a review. It will help Snowdrift out and you get to yes. leave your words there for other people to see. So if any of you are out there doing that, consider doing that later tonight. Um, I assume that much like YouTube, the review doesn't have to be an essay. It can just be just your thoughts and it's probably still very valuable. So yeah, consider Absolutely. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so another question um, is, mm -hmm. what are your opinion on 100 Gex? Uh-oh, <laughs> here we go. It's gonna uh, set, the, set the chat you know, ablaze. Here's the, well, here's the thing. I don't really have a hot take. If you'd have asked me about like a band like 100 Gex and like I was like five years younger, I would probably be like, oh, fuck that, dude. Like, it's not even music, bro. This shit sucks. But, like, now I'm getting I'm, – I'm actually reversing. Like, I'm getting much more open-minded about music. And, like, I heard 100 Gex, and 
I have some qualms with it, but like overall, I'm just like, this shit's insane, dude. Like these people are having a lot of fucking fun doing some weird shit. And honestly, uh, more power to them. Like I've only heard a couple tracks and it's not quite my thing. I like some like noisy, heavy stuff here and there. Uh, I don't know if heavy is quite the right word, but, um, but like, that's cool. Like if that's your fucking vibe, then like, get it dude like that's it's it's wild to me so yeah um, i feel I, I, like uh i feel like i, I have when, go for it go for it sorry sorry I, j- I just hate it when people are just like this isn't even like music this is just garbage like this sucks like it's just like fuck you dude like just because it doesn't fit into some like category or, or box that you're familiar with doesn't mean it's not like valuable or enjoyable it's like people who like yeah okay dubstep was like kind of a meme but like a lot of people like that shit and like it had value and was doing interesting things and there's there's art there's 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 consideration and concentration and dedication that goes into creating that stuff it's not like they just toss shit at a wall like these yeah. people work really fucking hard to create that stuff yep so yeah and i i i feel like uh i don't know there's like there's this and this is this is going to touch a little bit on the politics nerve but you know there's this saying that like oh well like people become more conservative or whatever as they get older and <laughs> that has not been my experience maybe Dang. maybe it'll happen maybe there'll be a switch when i hit like 60 and i'll just become like crotchety and closed minded or something but um as i as i've lived longer i've become more open minded over time and more interested in things that i didn't know that i or didn't know that i could get value from um Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) grime dango says dubstep is important only because post dubstep is amazing (laughs) Ooh, i've not heard of this there you go interesting i I got really in there was something called chill step which i was really fucking into and it had like some similar elements to it and kind of those same like uh some of those same drum sounds but it was a lot more like obviously chill like ambient and, and dreamy and uh melodic and stuff i was really into that post dubstep yeah uh, apparently that chill step like. is uh considered post dubstep so there you go oh, okay well Looks like you've already yeah. enjoyed that some. was my shit yeah 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 um how about your thoughts on charlie xcx do you know um, are you familiar yeah 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 um you know i haven't listened to her like i should but um she what i have listened to that she makes is fucking remarkable like pop music um yeah she's yeah, really like talented it. and like her stuff is really fucking good i need i need to listen to more of it um carly ray jepson also comes to mind for some reason and god she's fucking phenomenal uh the the emotions ep if i'm not mistaken um I'm I'm blanking a bit here, but that that shit is amazing. Holy shit! A lot of a lot of people concurring with you in chat right now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and feel free if this is not uh this is not like a question you want to answer. It is a little bit of a heavy one given the circumstances, but I figured I'd field it, and you can pass on it. No pressure if you want to pass on it. But um, has has COVID has COVID positively or negatively affected your life with regard to music? Um, are you able to make music easier because of lockdowns and not having to go outside all the time or has it gotten harder? Sure. Um, I mean, in, in regards to music, um, yeah, I guess to a degree, I'm kind of in a weird situation where <clears throat> pre COVID, I hadn't really played shows in a long time just for a, an, a, multitude of reasons Mm -hmm. and so um really when covid hit i just had another excuse to completely lock myself in a barrier and just make a lot of fucking music which is pretty much what happened um but now i've like put this album out and i'm just like i can't really do much off of it like there's not much i would have been able to do but maybe play some shows locally would have been fun and I, i really miss playing shows um i posted like some twitter some clips on twitter a few nights ago of like um shows that i played back in like 2014 that's awesome 2012 i've been i've been playing music a very fucking long time um and uh yeah playing shows it's it it has its 
pros and cons, but uh, definitely missed that. Um, yeah. And I want to do that again soon. Well, uh, I think that uh, I, I can imagine that it, once once the COVID is cleaned up a bit, um, it, it's like I can imagine that there is going to be an incredible appetite for live music. So I have a feeling that it won't be too hard yeah. to get some shows uh, and stuff, even if the album came out earlier. You know, like I, I don't know that I think the the sheer hunger people will have for live shows is, is probably going to uh, probably going to spike back up, at least hopefully. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, let's see here. Let's take a look here. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody's questions. One moment. Let me just make sure I'm just scrolling back through here. Oh, uh, Encrade asked, what are your thoughts on Jack Conti's music? If you're familiar with it. Um, Jack, the name is familiar, but, um, the I, can't, guy? I can't place it so that's the pomplamous guy right that's mm. the guy who found um founded patreon i think and also does music really? i actually went and saw yeah i saw actually um i saw pomplamous um in live um and like a while ago with a friend and i got to to meet the meet the both of them um jack and God, I'm. It's been so many years. I'm. I'm missing all their names. But anyway, it was, it was cool. It was. It was. They were. They were two hours late for the show, which sucked. But yikes. Oh, I saw them in Boston. I think it was in Boston where I saw them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Wenland asks, uh, "What was your favorite track from the album?" Um. Again, they wanted to hear you. Uh, say that they couldn't remember oh i think you said um, bhc right track seven bhc definitely and then track nine reveries we meet again were probably my favorites um i mean leaving with sunrise is another favorite um just because uh that's a cool track but yeah definitely bhc and reveries um bhc just because like i know that one's my favorite because every time i'm like listening through the album which i won't be doing much of anymore but um, <laughs> can every time i was listening through the album that song would come on and i would have to put it on repeat because there are just so many layers mm -hmm. and things happening and the track is just so long with so much depth that you can just really sit in it for a while so take it all so in for me i love that one yeah yeah so uh, that's, yeah. that's awesome um yeah, so uh, I think that's all the questions we've gotten in so far. Does anybody, this is your last opportunity, get some questions in before uh, Snowdrift uh, heads out, I imagine. It's probably pretty late for you there, right? It's what, like... Yeah, it's uh, almost, almost 11. 11. Damn, it's getting late. It doesn't feel like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I, uh, I don't even know if time doesn't even make sense to me anymore. I'm just like, I don't fucking know what time it is. It's just like, it's dark o'clock. That's all I know. It's just dark. Yeah, now it's starting to get dark early, and it's like, oh, God, like 4 o'clock. It's like almost nighttime, basically. Um, Got to yeah. get adjusted to that now. Yeah. Weird. Um, uh, We have uh, Cash, Cash McCrash says, do you have any pets to show off? Um, I wish. No pets? I do not. Yeah. No pets. Um, I love dogs, um, but I'm – I've – in my like mid twenties, I think I've developed a slight allergy. Aww. I have been thinking, yeah, I know it sucks. I have been thinking about maybe adopting a cat though. Oh, um, that'd be sweet. Yeah. Kitties I can like be cats. Great. Yeah. I I have mixed feelings about cats. Fair enough. But um, I've had a I've had a troubled past. <laughs> cats. <laughs> I just put it that way. Yeah, believe it or not. Oh I'm, no. I've had some experiences, but uh, but cats are they could be really cool. They um, can be. Any. Yeah, and dogs are I think they're a little too high maintenance for me. That's um, fair. If I had someone else to like drop some weight on, then maybe, but it's it's just me. So yeah, I'm gonna um, take them out and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. I, I'm lucky because I live with I live with how? I just pulled my own hair somehow. What the fuck? Oof. Um okay. Um uh, but uh yeah, like um I, I live with two of my partners and we have a dog. So it's like we split the taking the dog out, you know, like if I'm on stream, they'll take, they'll take her out. So it's, yeah, I, I feel you a hundred percent on that. Dogs are, they have to be maintained in that way. Um, but yes. yeah. yeah, so that answers that question. And then let me see. 
that's not the, that's not a question for for right now donald trump my goodness um i think that's everything <laughs> um my goodness right. donald trump holy shit um talk well, about donald jumping trump it up is in to the stream yeah donald trump we have we we had both donald trump and um joe joe biden in here the other night um holy I'm going, fuck yeah dude. i know it was wild it wow. was absolutely wild um i'm going to drop your links here in the chats um the Thank spotify and and Bandcamp. is there anything else you'd like to shout out before uh before you head off for the night oh one more uh, question actually before you do that we okay. just got a question do you have a favorite video game soundtrack or a favorite individual track from a video game oh that's a good one um i mean i have multiple i, I really couldn't choose one favorite um the 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 few that come to mind for sure is a uh, legend of zelda majora's mask easy so fucking good um there's an artist called the theopony or theophany i'm not sure i know what you're talking about i think it's theopony yeah yeah who did that incredible like uh, uh recomposing of some of the majora's mask so music it's good. fucking amazing it's so good uh i actually did um an instrumental like kind of remix of um of the astral observatory track it's on the youtubes it's on there so um that's one of my favorite songs off that ost and i love the observatory in that game it's gorgeous um the other one that comes to mind for sure is near automata oh very good. has not only one of the best uh soundtracks in a video game but just the best sound design of a video game that i've ever seen uh or seen haha uh listen to um, it's fucking impeccable. I mean, that game is genuinely a masterpiece. Um, yeah, uh, I enjoy that I game a lot. Feel like things come in threes. So, so my third. I mean, I guess um, trying to think of a, a strong third to finish on, but probably uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver too, maybe uh, just good. for like total nostalgia purposes. Yeah um i have one of my favorite games of all time uh pokemon silver and and the music from those games is really fucking really good so yeah there's a couple uh i have i have showed this on stream before um but if you have my do you have my stream pulled up right now uh no oh, okay um, uh i was gonna say i was gonna show you i have a majora's mask tattoo um and oh really yeah it's actually huge i have a huge majora's mask tattoo on my on my back um but i was just going to show it for people who Sick. haven't seen it before but i'll show it up on the screen and then uh i can always if you're curious i can always send it to you later there's there's it for everyone who's watching this is my majora's mask tattoo um it's right on my back but it's hard for me to actually show it live without like yeah so yeah there you go there you have i've it. got um I've got a Q bone on my leg here. Um, it would be kind of hard to show off, but it's it's there. I've got a Q bone and a Yoshi. I don't That's have so too good. many tattoos, but I want to do like a kind of like a Nintendo sleeve at some point. That's oh, awesome. I see it. That's yeah. that's a sick piece. Yeah, yeah, that's that's super cool. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with the artist that I found, and uh, turned out great. Still looks great. Uh, hasn't faded fucking a bit. So, um, I yeah. I have like a replica uh, Majora's mask. Um, it's not hanging up right now, but it's it's in here somewhere. That's that, so uh, cool. A friend of mine got for me. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I, I yeah, there's so much game. I love about that game. Like, holy shit! Uh, it was my my favorite yeah. game of all time, though. It was though I don't really have to. I guess there's no pressure to really have a true hierarchy of best games of all time. Um, how un un anarchist of me um but but uh, it was probably fairly recently um edged out by by pathologic 2 um which is a breathtaking mm. game and now it is followed up on that on that list if i had to make a list of top 10 by a game i was about to recommend to you which is disco elysium if you have you played it yeah yeah, yeah. um it's been on my list oh my but God. i have yet to 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 get it yeah yeah i really want to though it looks fucking awesome I have a feeling you'll really appreciate it. Um, the soundtrack that? is phenomenal, and it is a, yeah. uh, it has. I'll just say it has very, very, very good politics. I'll just put it that way. Um, nice. And it's right. it's game is like the, the the style of the game is like this sort of like watercolor 
very like um melancholy but like has these it's just it's it's an emotional mosaic a really wonderful didn't, game didn't one of the devs while accepting an award basically like quote marks or some uh, shit he, he said i don't remember uh, if that was school Elysium. yeah yeah he dedicated the award uh special special dedication <laughs> to uh carl marx who made this game possible was what he yeah. said <laughs> That was so fucking based. Yeah, no, I was like at the, when I heard like that, I, was BGA, like, I yeah. have to play this. This is so good. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, you'll so. really enjoy it. Yeah, they had. Um, in fact, it's really funny. But um, uh, God. Oh, okay. So they the this this feels cringe now, but uh, but like probably wasn't at the time that this was implemented. But uh, all four of the Chapo guys, um, are voice are voice characters in the game. And uh, and oh. also uh, one of the main characters in the game is is voiced by the fucking host of Red Scare Pod, um, <laughs> which yeah, uh, twenty twenty did not. Is, uh, a, is it Dasha? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Yeah, yeah. She voices. Well, I'm, one I'm of the main okay characters. with that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, again, like. Uh, red scare i don't have the highest opinion about them but to be fair this game was yeah. made uh before they did a lot of their most cringiest takes um including the bannon sure. interview which uh yeah but uh but yeah i just wanted to recommend the game because it is uh, phenomenal it is phenomenally good yeah. um but yeah um yeah so uh thank you so much for coming on it was a wonder to listen through the album with you and hear your thoughts on it um i apologize if i was a a terrible interviewer i never have done interviews before so uh i just no, kind of great flew by the seat of my pants yeah. but um yeah uh so yeah anything else you wanted to shout out before um before you head out no no i mean it, yeah just uh give the album a try hope you enjoy it uh, love you appreciate you and thank you for having me on it's yeah. been a lot of fun Thank you so much, and uh, have a wonderful night. We'll talk soon. All right. You too. Bye. All right. Why is it? There we go. All right. All right. All right. All right. Everyone, was that not incredible? Anybody need some ambient hell choir I wrote like four years ago? Busy B says yes. Yes, that was based. That was fun. I had a really good time. I'm sorry, but you're chlop. What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means.